All right. Good afternoon, Saints Nation. We have ourselves a fantastic afternoon full of Rocket League action coming at you here for some CRL Fall Qualifier. Of course, the second one of the season, and we are not going to waste any time, and apparently neither did PFW as they just shot right into the field. Got a goal, but okay. Fresh plate. 1-1 off the start here. Now, of course, a little bit of chaos here as we start things off, but of course, we are going to be following both of our St. Clair Saints varsity rosters here today. So that's going to be, of course, St. Clair Saints gold, as we see in the orange here. And we will meet up with St. Clair Saints green at some point throughout the day, catching all the action as it goes on down. Starting off here for the starting lineup here for PFW, who just got themselves a forfeit win in the first round. That's going to be Funky Soul, Okan, and uh, Shrieky. Then, of course, the hometown squad here, your St. Clair Saints, is going to be Boris, Christian, and Besh. Saints are starting things off in the offensive zone where Okan is trying to put this thing aside, but Christian, double tap, crossbar, nearly getting another goal, but a big bump actually allows for Besh to get in there and get the shot off right away. Big plays coming out here from Christian. This little extra nudge onto Okan made all the difference and allows for Besh to stick it in there right side. So with the Saints having themselves the 2-1 lead here, just a matter of killing time. Of course, these CRL matches, it's a little bit uh, stressful because these are only best of threes to start things off with. We're more accustomed to best of fives as we see Barris again with Besh with the fantastic pass. Barris just found themselves in the perfect opportunity to just catch that big pass, drive by and smut the pass to gone. And there we go, a little extra insurance here for the St. Clair Saints going into this first game. Of course, we have the coverage of St. Clair Saints gold and green, but we are also going to be checking in on St. Clair Saints Academy bracket as well. Unfortunately, we don't necessarily have a feed to watch their matches live, but doing the best we can. Of course, both gold and academy, I believe, are both playing in a additional tournament this weekend, being all the way down in Kentucky. So, of course, big shadows and good luck to them. As we see Vesh just looking to put some style onto the... PFW defenders, a little bit of backup there. Baris is going to do a little bit of destruction while we take it towards the net. One more time, centered on through, going to be given over to Vesh for the time being. who has got it up along the side, just killing some time as we are about to approach the halfway point in this game. For the moment, it is going to be controlled by PFW, trying to break into the same zone. They're going to be able to take it around the right-hand side for just a moment. Funky going to try and put it up to the center, but it's actually going to intercept it by Vesh, who is going to bring it to the backboard, but it is going to end up being cleared at least to center. But Christian is there to stop that from going any further. Up until Okan, anyway, was able to punt that thing forward. Big rebound, actually, was going right for Shrieky. Could have been a sh shot possibility, but was stopped right at the line. Now right back into the PFW zone. We see Barris going from the roof, bringing on down. No more boost left in the tank to get fancy with it. Is going to get the ball intercepted. Turned on over. Still a little bit of control. It is going towards the Saints net. Nobody there for the time being, but it is going to be pushed aside, thankfully, there by the Saints defender to stop this from becoming a 3-2 game. Keep that two-goal lead going. But Ocon once again. Putting that thing right towards the crease, but some good defense so far. Saints, if the ball's going into their own crease, it is not going in there for very, very long. Shrieky up in the center zone, looking towards the Saints net. Ran out of boost, however, so it's going to get completely turned over. Two Saints actually going to be barreling down alongside Vesh to try and bring this through, but a good play there from Ocon to actually stop all three members of the Saints from putting that towards their uh, the PFW net. And he's going to go toward the Saints net as well. Vesh with a fantastic little save opportunity there using the rooftop of the car to make that stop. Shrieky, though, looking for some sort of rebound. It is going to go wide this time, though. So small little uh, breath of relief here for the Saints as that was some decent offense actually coming out here from the PFW squad in that last 30 seconds or so. Funky Soul going to be stuck kind of taking it into their own side of the net, but actually almost a huge interception there by one of the Saints players. Tried to knock it down inside the crease. 
Weapon towards the net, but Shriki gonna get the save. Saints are going to be able to kill some more time though. Slowly but surely just whittling this game away. Kind of choking the life out of PFW here. The ball just stuck in the PFW zone as we see here. 30 seconds left to go. Paris brings this on the right-hand side. Goes wide, but it's A-OK. -okay. You don't have to score right now, so that's completely fine. Just kind of still stuck in PFW zone. One more time into the corner. Saints are going to carry this back into the PFW zone once again. One more for good measure. Absolutely. Let's get ourselves a hat trick here for Barris. Just send a message in game number one here. As Vesh gets it started, the nice little pass to Barris, but then as you see here, Vesh just absolutely threatened. Didn't actually make contact with the defender of the PFW Esports player, but they still had to respect their presence and they could not. Uh, make the save. Almost one additional one there for Vesh for good measure. But we are going to see the ball hit the ground. That is going to be game number one here going over to your St. Clair Saints gold roster. And of course we do see Green right around the corner as well. They were waiting on their matchup is between, I believe it was McGill University and one other UC San Diego. That game going on almost 25 minute mark so that must have been a hard-fought battle there, and we see, of course, Green ready to take on whoever wins that one. Taking a look around the rest of the brackets as well, though. Let's see if we can find some additional ones. Of course, while I'm talking about brackets, or you want to check it out for yourself, exclamation mark bracket in the Twitch chat. We'll bring up all of the brackets here today. It does look like the winner of the St. Clair Saints gold match versus PFW. And hey, there we go. Thank you, production, for popping that one up as well. But winner of the gold and PFW match is going to be going up against either Mizzou Club or UTSA Blue. Both those matches in progress. We have gotten past this section, as you can see, just littered of disqualifations and no-shows to kind of start the tournaments off. But... What would an esports tournament be without a round or two of uh, of no shows, to say the least? Here, but one thing we can show off right away here is, of course, game number two between PFW Esports and Saint Clair Saints Gold. PFW kind of started to come around a little bit in the late game, but not enough to really threaten this gold roster. Baris, of course, getting the hat trick. Christian just being an absolute monster on defense, and Vesh kind of being the. Uh, the wearer of all hats, if you will, whether it be the enforcer, goal scorer, or playmaker, he is absolutely all over the place. Gonna, Saints gonna bring it into the offensive zone, and they do actually manage to just blow right by the defender to score the first goal of this game here. It is gonna be Christian, and again, Vesh actually did do a little bit of interference with two of the defenders, a bump to push the one aside, knock them off trajectory, and a demo on the other. So, really using the car to its fullest extent playing that enforcer role and really allowing Christian to just walk that one right on in. Exactly how the Saints Nation would want to see that one start, but a good little attempt there from PFW as well. Right off the, or pretty close to right off the face off. Drills that one right towards the Saints net, but did not go in this time by. Besh now passes it off, off the backboard. Is there a rebound? There is one, but it is going to be met immediately by a defender from the PFW squad, which is gonna bring this thing right back to center field. Passes it off, that is gonna be Funky Soul trying to get past Christian. Christian though does keep him stuck in the corner. A very, very slow layup into the center crease of the Saints net, but it is not gonna go any further. Vesh gonna carry this thing all the way down, sets it up for Christian. This thing's gonna crawl, but barely not make it until Baris gets the finishing blow and secures goal number two here for the Saints in this second game. Yeah, Okan kind of got stuck in reverse, and of course, you do not have the momentum that you would normally want in that situation, driving in reverse like that. Did what they could, but could not get the job done this time by. Saints, once again, going to take themselves a nice, comfortable lead before this halfway point. How about another fantastic pass, fantastic finish. We are going to see Barris here up on the corner, right along the wall and a beautiful angle here for Vesh to just knock that thing under the crossbar. The chef's kiss on top to say the least. Perfect angle and I just sit here in awe because I know I would definitely not be able to do that in, in any of my games. I don't know how any of these players do it. 
Bounced off the face off. It did go into the PFW zone, but it is going to be carried out here by uh, Shrikey into the corner again here for this, the Saints. They do manage to turn it over and get it back to their own control. Still stuck in their zone for the moment, though. Barris going to try and make a solo play. Did actually get the demo on the goalie, but the goalie did manage to get a piece of it before getting blown up. So it is going to be stopped this time by three minutes still left in this second game. And the winner's bracket life here for PFW is being threatened, and they have a lot of work to do as the Saints are just continuing to put ball like through the crease, threatening a goal at any sort of opportunity. <coughs> any sort of opportunity, excuse me, sorry about that. But right back into the PFW zone. That one was from your own crease. Okay, Christian, absolutely bombs it. How in the world did that happen? Yeah, just an unlucky pass of sorts just lines it up. And as you can see, that one's in the uh, almost at the 120 kilometer per hour mark. That was an absolute rocket from your own corner. And the Saints gold roster starting to run away with this one. About the face off, we're back into the Saints zone for the time being, where Shrikey is going to try and carry this one in. Going to be on hot pursuit, though, by Christian, who tries to pass this off the bench, but a bad bounce, actually. Bonky sold the absolute capitalization here for PFW. After the clearing attempt, I don't think went as planned. Tried to get a shot off the back wall, and instead it goes over to Funky Soul, who tucks that into that uh, top left corner and puts PFW on the board here for game number two. I mean, I said the Saints were running away with this one, but there's still plenty of Rocket League to be played. Two minutes, of course, is a long time in Rocket League here, so it could still happen. Granted, momentum is telling me otherwise. The, the vibe and the momentum that I'm feeling watching this matchup says that Saints have this thing in, like, full control. But, like I say to my staff, and like I'll say again here on the broadcast, I would absolutely love to be wrong. Let's see what you got, PFW. As we see, Vesh actually going to make me eat my words and say, yeah, this is running, or uh, this one is going to be run away with. After almost a solo play here, going past two, after getting the initial pass, and tucks that one on in. The beautiful thing about these CRL uh, qualifiers, these game days of sorts, though, is that the action, for the most part, at least in this early portion of the day, just does not stop. By the time this gold game finishes, it should not be too long. As I, hang on a second, let me uh, eat my words here. The door was wide open here for, for oh God, to just kind of tuck that one on through. Right through center, didn't have to really finesse it at all. Just send it down mid and you're good. Still quite the mountain to climb though. 5-2 is definitely no small feat, especially up against our Saints gold roster. Like I was saying a second ago, the green roster should be right around the court. And Barris, are you kidding me, my guy? Just making me eat words again here. After the pass from Christian sends this one up, and then Barris is just able to get the double touch and secure that sixth goal here and probably goal number five of the entire series if my mind is uh, on top of that correctly. So Bears just having an absolute field day here with the PFW defense. Just over a minute to go in this second game. Of course, best of three. So if Saints can hang on to this lead, that will confirm their ticket into the next round where it looks like UTSA Blue is waiting for them. So Gold isn't going to have to wait too long for their next match either. It's going to be exciting and a little chaotic here for us on the production side of things, but we absolutely love the back-to-back non-stop action that these CRL Fall Qualifiers always give us. Besh up one more time, gives a teammate a little high five up in the air just for the sake of it. But now, a little bit of a runaway here, 40 seconds here for PFW to put on a show. And to be honest, they're going to make us on it. Uh, a little bit honest here. Shriki is going to be able to, to put this one on through. A funny little bounce off the Saints defender. And then the demo on top to just secure that goal. Six to three, 37 seconds. I mean, I've seen crazier. I've seen worse. It doesn't happen often. 
but you never know. We'll see what happens here as the Saints just going to put completely put away with that thought. Hat trick for Vesh as he secures goal number three here of this game. Christian with the perfect setup from the corner and no chance, no defenders, nobody home. And that's going to be seven to three now. Again here for the St. Clair Saints gold roster. That's exactly the kind of face-off you're looking for if you're here for the Saints. Just pop fly directly into the PFW zone, just killing all the time in the world. Don't let anything too crazy happen. It is going to be Funky Soul, though, getting an additional one after the Saints had nobody home in the back of the net. Okan with a nice little drop pass of sorts to allow for Funky Soul to out-drag race the Saints defender and secure that one into the net. With 15 seconds ago, a nice little pinch there from Barris is going to send this thing right back into PFW zone. Never mind, it goes into the Saints zone, but 10 seconds left to go. And this one is basically all she wrote here. The Saints killing the rest of the time. And whether it be 7-4, 7-5, or what have you. Oh, well, almost 8-4 here for St. Clair Saints gold. But they are going to be victorious and are going to be moving on into winners round three, where it is, I believe, UTSA Blue that will be waiting for them. But just because one team is waiting doesn't mean the broadcast has to wait. Off we go here. UC San Diego successful in their matchup against McGill University and are now going to be our opponents here for the St. Clair Saints green team, their first game of the day. And that is going to be Cy actually catch my breath and look over for one second here. And that is going to be Cy who's just going to be able to take care of that one by basically ripping it off of the hood of the uh, UC San Diego player. Beautifully done to get the Saints off to good one goal lead. Of course, now... And we're here. This, this green roster, of course, is going to be fab. So Jazzy and Sai. And Jazzy actually is going to push this one on through as well. No introductions necessary for this green roster here. So it would seem fantastic carry and pass there from Sai to let Jazzy secure that one. On the side of UC San Diego, that is going to be Glassidus, Green Cheese, and Lava Blue looking to try and make the comeback here. I'm sure they're feeling pretty good after that McGill University victory, but the wake-up call is apparently early and upon us here for UC San Diego. As the Saints green roster getting those two goals within 30 seconds is pretty devastating. Almost had themselves a third, but a fantastic save there from Glassy, Glassy does. Lava Blue off the backboard and then crashes right through the crease, but nobody is able to put that one on through. Just gets dumped into the corner. Nice and safe here for St. Clair. Glassidus tries to just send this thing off to the center. He is going to match a demo side, but it is going to be cleared. Very slow clear into the UC San Diego zone. And drop it on down towards center side with a little interception, but it is going to be given over to Glassy pretty quick here. Fabso in the center, 50-50 did not go into their uh, into their favor. So now it's going to be up to Jazzy with no boost in the tank to pass this off. Side double touch along the corner, tries to center this off. One player there. It is going to be stopped by Glassidus, but Jazzy drops down off the backboard. Not going to quite get the shot just yet. Sai is going to have to pick it up. Fabso is around the center. It's going to crawl. It's going to go right to Fabso. Can he get his own rebound? He's going to try it once. He's going to try it twice. How about a third? Drop pass in the corner. Jazzy, let's make that a 3-0 game, why don't we? Definitely helps when you got that much boost in the tank that you could just stall it up there for as long as they did. Let the Saints get into position and a fantastic play there for the St. Clair Saints green roster as a whole to make that one happen. But UC San Diego still has half the game to go here. Never say die yet. They do manage to knock out Jazzy, but the pass was completed. It's going to be Fabso. Tries to pass it off to themselves. It's going to end up going down towards Jazzy, it looks like. But then now it's going to be uh, Glassy, who does pick it up for the time being. Loose ball in the Saints' crease. It is going to get put into the corner. 
Scary opportunity there for UC San Diego, but could not quite find the finishing blow that they were looking for. Saints into the UC San Diego zone. Green Cheese trying to clear this up the left-hand side. Sai is going to be there to meet them for the time being. Passes this one up. Looks like there's nobody home. And Jazzy with the hat trick here. Both Saints teams find themselves multiple hat tricks here already in their first series of the day. What a pass from Sai and what an angle there from Jazzy to beat out all of the defenders and tuck the thing in inside the right post. Off the face off, we're going to be going into the UC San Diego zone once again. Green Cheese does have control on about half a take of boost. Can they get anything with it though? Not if they get bumped around like that. It is going to be the Saints. Passes and one off. This one's going over to Fab. So Jazzy is in center, looking for the finishing touch. Actually, it's going to lob it up along the, the backboard. Gets an additional touch on it. It's just floating along the goal line but it is going to be pushed aside by UC San Diego for the time being, but the ball has not been cleared and it's still, see, or still in the UC uh, SD zone until finally Green Cheese is just gonna bomb this thing all the way out into the St. Clair Saints green zone. They're a little bit of an unfortunate drive by here for the Saints actually puts it back into their own zone, but it's gonna be Fabso now who tries to get past one. Nope, Green Cheese, good little interference on the right-hand side, but it is gonna now be cleared to this you see San Diego zone where it is going to be Sai waiting for it alongside Fab. So can they keep this on and keep the pressure going? Little bit of a drag race as I think it's cleared right into the state zone. Big shot, but a bigger save here from Jazzy to keep San Diego completely skunked so far in this first game. All three Saints might as well be bump drafting each other with how close they are on this map but still able to just brute force the ball in over and over. And how about a fifth? That is going to be Sai going to be credited here with this goal after Jazzy. And um, we're just kind of duking it out. Like, after you, good sir. Sends it on through. Fabso the gentleman. With 30 seconds left, I think we could all basically assume where this one's going. You see San Diego going to try and get themselves on the board. And honestly, there you go. Glass it is there. It is going to get a solid goal here after a nice bounce after. Oh, that was actually a pass to himself now that I look at it. So I'm just passing it along the wall and started it themselves. He had one teammate there acting like a linebacker and it, it all worked out in the end. And they get a little extra momentum going into game two, knowing that they did not get skunked. They did not get shut out here in game number one. Unless they could somehow miraculously get four goals in 10 seconds, which in all my years of watching Rocket League, I don't think I've seen. And this one, Sai is just going to clear this one out. And that will be all she wrote for game number one. We will check in with St. Clair Saints Green in just a couple of moments, but we're gonna hang out with our St. Clair Saints Gold roster for a little bit as they are starting their next round here up against UTSA Blue. And what a fantastic way to start things off here as we have Vesh, like nothing pretty here, just brute forcing it past multiple defenders and gonna be able to push that one through the net. UTSA starting roster for this first game here. We do have Freeze, Triangular Box, and Vettel. Of course, no change on the Saints Gold starting roster. It is still Barrist, Christian, and Besh. And how about that pass from the corner? Vesh is going to immediately get a second goal on the board just like that. Over Bar's head, kind of made it so that Triangular Box didn't have the clearest angle to getting to Vesh in the first place. And that's just going to be St. Clair Saints goal, getting two goals in under 45 seconds. An absolute W in my book. Can they find some more? Barris leading the charge here, looking to find somebody to center this one off to. It is going to get stolen and sent right back into the Saints zone, however. Right around center field. It is going to be picked up by Barris. Basically a full tank of boost, but it's going to be intercepted here by Triangular Box from the UTSA side, pushing it towards the Saints net. Going to be stopped. Big pass, big shot actually coming out here from Christian, but does end up going wide, but it forced a lot of the UTSA defenders to get really uncomfortable. And I think two of them trying to make that the same save. 
Definitely making them a little antsy, to say the least here. Not even halfway through the game, and some risky plays are coming up pretty quickly. Triangular Box trying to interfere with some of the Saints' offense here as they try to get it out of the UTSA zone, but it's no, one, no one's getting a solid hit here. Finally, a solid shot here comes out from the Saints' side. Right back from... Uh, Right towards center, going to be stopped for the time being by Freeze. Virus is going to keep this thing in, though. One more opportunity as well. Passes it off. The tic-tac-toe play was absolutely phenomenal. Where'd you learn that one? Fantastic job. The quickest of pass and into the shot. I would have hated to have been triangular box in that scenario. Who do you take the, sh the save from? Who do you try to get in front of? because no matter what, it's like a 50-50 chance of getting it wrong. And with that, Saints are going to now go up 3-0. And one more lob, one more interference, but one more crossbar to stop the Saints from getting themselves the quickest of 4-0 leads here in this series. Barr is going to just bring it in himself. Actually, I think it's crawling right on the line. And that's going to be another hat trick here for the Saints. That's like number three here across the board as Vesh finds the third after absolute panic ensues in the uh, UTSA blue goal line. But not even halfway, and we are up four. St. Clair Saints gold looking strong so far here. Triangular box now. Trying to get some sort of offense here alongside Freeze, but the boost is really lacking here for most of these uh, drivers here on the side of UTSA. Finally, they get something up, but it's going to cost them a shot. A big save, though. Another one. Vesh, how about a four-piece here at game number one? After yet another pass from Barris allows Vesh to just go absolutely nuts. Finally, just breaking that halfway point here into this game. And of course, for anybody who's just joining us or tuning in now, exclamation mark bracket will bring up the brackets that all of our Saints are competing in. So you can follow all of the action as it is happening. GVSU is currently sitting um, in the next round here. If the, gold if the gold team can keep this up. As of right now, it seems like they're kind of running away with things, but I mean, you never know. But with this one, I think we kind of know where this one is uh, kind of turning its way into. It's looking pretty convincing here for the Saints. Meanwhile, though, let's take a look at our green match here where it's UC San Diego versus St. Clair Saints Green. And we have ourselves a minute left in this game and nobody's actually scored yet. We might finally have ourselves a little bit of momentum. UC San Diego getting that one goal to start might've been enough, but never mind. Jazzy, what a play from about halfway across the field carries this thing all by themselves just has to get past gladius there's nothing you can do about that one goaltender's nightmare 42 seconds left to go here for san diego to try and tie this thing up off the face off it goes directly into uc san diego zone and now it's jazzy again in the corner with it just keeping it up into the skies killing a bunch of time Pass it off to Sai as well to just keep the pressure on. All of the UC San Diego members are like within a car length of each other, just having a hard time spreading out. Goes into the same zone, but it is going to be controlled by Jazzy. So just continuing to kill off the clock. One more carry, one more pass, one more handoff, and one more knockdown from the skies. But it's not quite going to be enough to get a goal. But they may not need it as they continue to keep this thing into the UC San Diego zone. Can somebody from that blue side keep this ball up and put it towards the net? Or is it going to get knocked to the ground? And sure enough, St. Clair Saints Green are going to win their first round of the day. Move on over into that winner's round three. As we now join St. Clair Saints Gold once again, where the absolute battering of UTSA continues. 6-0 in this first game here. Let's hope for the sake of UTSA that the download has been complete 
And then for the sake of their momentum, let's see if they can get themselves one on the board nice and quick here. They've been playing fine, but just too many mistakes, leaving too many doors open, allowing for lots of punishes. And also a good little attempt there from UTSA and trying rare box to try and knock that one on through. Did not quite work out this time by, but as we finally get the countdown, UTSA Blue gonna be left out of the scoreboard just barely. To be honest, that was a very, very solid final attempt but a massive message sent here by the St. Clair Saints Gold roster in game number one, as that was a absolute uh, fantastic showing from them. As we do see our St. Clair Saints green squad might be saying, hey, where's the camera on the St. Clair Saints Gold roster? I sadly do not have a camera that goes as far as Kentucky. Of course, they are playing also in another tournament this weekend alongside the St. Clair Saints Academy roster, Bluegrass something, the Bluegrass Tournament is something in in, uh, in Kentucky. For some reason, the name is escaping me right now. But you'll have to trust me on that one. If I get any updates about that tournament in particular, I'll gladly let you know as well. But yeah, the green roster definitely not looking phased after the, uh, the close game there that UC San Diego did end up giving them at the very, very end there. Let's do see if they happen to have their next opponent already picked up here. Oh, this might be a little bit of a revenge from last week. As we get started with game number two here for St. Clair Saints Gold and UTSA Blue. But for uh, the St. Clair Saints green roster, they should be then going up against Tigres uh, Uno Blue, which is another team that we faced actually last week in the CRL Open. I'm hoping for uh, a little bit of a better fight from t the t Tigers, if I'm going to be completely honest, but we'll see. One week is plenty of time to shape up here. As we see Paris, what on earth even just happened there? So many cars were actually up into the skies, but yet nobody got a piece of it, it seems. Oh, just the slightest of touches. Literally got a headlight on it, and that was just enough to get the job done here. In regards to the uh, Tigres, you know, Blue, of course, I was just saying that we may be the favorites. However, they are coming off of a 2-0 win up against Keene State College. So they are feeling pretty good, if I would say so myself. So I'm going to be looking forward to that match happening in just a couple moments time. Both teams are getting checked in right now. But in the meantime, we'll continue to ride along here with St. Clair Saints Gold as they continue to fire shot after shot on this UTSA Blue net. Vesh is going to stop this thing from going towards their own net here, using the crossbar to their advantage. Trying their box alongside Vettel, trying to keep this thing in. Actually, a very threatening opportunity here for UTSA, but it was not enough to get the shot on target. Just a little bit wide and a little bit high. So now stuck in the UTSA zone once again. Vesh messing around here with Vettel, but Vettel is going to be able to clear it out for the time being alongside Triangular Box. But then right just like that, one instance turns the ball over right back towards the UTSA Blue Net. Vettel again trying to get this thing out. Box is there, but it's going to be stopped immediately by Barris, who passes it off towards the center, but it is going to be intercepted this time here by Freeze. So no freebies this time by here from UTSA Blue. And there we go. It is going to be a tied up game here with both of these teams wanting to either get this one to a game three or move on to see GBSU, who is currently waiting in the next round here for us for some more best of three action. But there we go. That's exactly what UTSA Blue needed here. They managed to break the curse. They don't, they're not like skunked for the series anymore. They got the first goal. You know you can do it. Now just do it again here, halfway in this game. We're just about halfway, and we are 1-1 here. A dangerous pass, actually, there from Vettel, but it did not end up getting as intercepted as badly as I was expecting. Centering pass, going to be a bit of a bouncer. It's going to force Christian up to the skies with next to no juice in the tank. Two members of UTSA diving high to try and stop that. Mark marks him out of the position. Two saves once again, but the second rebound does go wide. Saints getting some shots, but some decent defense coming out here from the UTSA squad. A little bit overextended, but it is working. They have not been punished for any of these doubles. So, A-OK -okay if uh, 
There's no harm, no foul of sorts, at least not this time. From center field, we now have Christian once again looking to bring it in himself. Ran out of gas, though. The rebound, and it's going to be able to somehow get past everybody. Okay, Barris gets the go-ahead goal here. A little bit of an awkward pop fly, but Barris is going to be able to hit this one. And how neither of those cars, the Saints one or the UTSA player, how neither of them hit that is beyond me, but fantastic job there from the Saints to capitalize. And now we're going right back into the UTSA zone once again. Hard charging ball, looking for a rebound here. Vesh is gonna find the player, but not the ball. And now it's going right the other way, actually. Saints might have overextended. Never mind, actually. Barris is gonna be right there to play defense just as much as he plays offense. And actually gets past one defender, looks to get past a second, but nope, Vettel is there to make the save. Big bomb, actually, from crease to crease there from Vettel. Puts that thing on target, too, forcing a save out of the Saints. Vettel putting it on through, and a fantastic finisher here from Freeze. We have ourselves a tie game, and UTSA starting to wake up here in this second game after Vettel puts it right on over the Saints' defense, and nobody to cover Freeze at that time. 2-2 two, two with about a minute 30 left to go. The download took a while, but maybe UTSA is on to something as we are seeing some more solid defense leading into a little bit more offense this time by Babaris. Actually, he might have found the opening as I just absolutely cursed them. That is going to be another hat trick here for a Saints player after Barris is going to find the lob shot directly over triangular box after the other two players, Freeze and Vettel, went on an offensive opportunity, got caught cheating a little bit too far forward, and what a punish. With that go-ahead goal, now the Saints are back exactly where they want to be, right back into the UTSA zone. Drop pass, looking for Vesh. Vesh is going to be able to poke this thing towards the net is actually going to be able to drive it himself, actually. Holy smokes, I was not expecting that when I saw how this was kind of playing out here. An awkward bounce, an awkward play. Did the two players from UTSA drive into each other? Oh no, the chaos is truly getting to the UTSA players at this point here. You could tell both players had the right idea, but when they have the same idea, they end up in the same place and they get into each other's way. Oh dear. Definitely a not like this kind of moment here for UTSA, but the Saints pressure has just been so good that it's forcing these odd ball encounters against UTSA over and over again. That like Christian has no boost, but this thing's flying up into the sky, just killing so much time. It is gonna be bounced off the backboard, off the crossbar, fantastic opportunity there for Freeze and the rest of UTSA, but was not quite able to capitalize this time by. And with nobody home, actually, not going to fire off the shot this time by. This time it will, though. Let's mark number four down here from Barrist, as that is going to be Christian, who originally did not even go for the initial shot, used the wall as a fourth teammate, and sets that one up nicely for Barris to secure goal number four. Well, this was a close game until it wasn't. Unfortunately, the pressure was just too much here for UTSA Blue, but thankfully, they can take some solace knowing that their tournament run is not over, with this being, of course, double elimination. They played well. They could take some of those plays and try to see how far they can go on the lower bracket side. Meanwhile, for the St. Clair Saints gold roster, they will be moving on to the next round, where I believe it was GVSU that was the team we were looking for. Yes, GVSU going to be our next opponents here once that ball hits the ground. There we go. Sayonara. And now we are going to be swinging this one right back on over to the St. Clair Saints green roster in just a moment's time as we are now up against Tigres, you know, blue. Solid start for both teams actually here as nobody has scored and I was just waiting for the commentary curse to come on and kick in there, but it did not quite work out. I need to write another one into the script apparently. We'll try that in maybe two minutes time. But uh, Tigris able to hold off the Saints offense as of the, right now. The members on the Tiger squad here. Got Edgar, got Sparkle Pato, and we have a goal actually here from 
fab, so able to break the curse. Maybe it didn't need two minutes. Maybe it just needed about 45 seconds after Jazzy sets up fab, so in a fantastic fashion, tucks that on the right-hand side of the defender, and that could be the go-ahead goal that wins them game number one here. And of course, also on the T Tigres team, we have Alex as well. Same starting roster, of course, here for the Saints green roster as well. Fabso, Jazzy, and Sai. Hello, Sai! Almost puts another one into the net. But some good defense coming out here from the Tigers, or Tigres. 30 seconds left to go. Still plenty of time to try and get one more tying goal. Or a little cherry on top here if you're here for the Saints, of course. Sai back on over to Jazzy. Jazzy looking for that center. It's a big pop fly through the crease. Fabso is there. Sai is there as well. Awkward angle, though, is going to be taken down and stopped by Sparkle Pato. Now, Alex off to another one of the Tigres. It's going to be on target. A slow bouncer. A little bit awkward in the Saints crease, but it is going to be picked up by Jazzy. Just have to hit the ground one more time, and that will be game. As it still is kind of floating, Sparkle Pato does have it for a second, but not enough time. And we finally have an opportunity to breathe here, as that is going to be Sinclair Saints taking that is scheme number one. So one more as well. And as you can see, cool, calm, and collected here for these Sinclair Saints green roster. And considering everything that happened last week, it is such a, like, I would imagine it being very, very difficult to go into the next tournament and being as cool and calm as they are. Because, of course, for those who did not catch last week or did not catch earlier when I was kind of describing this, both the green and the gold team had probably one of the most heartbreaking runs I've seen for a CRL Open qualifier for the Saturday in particular, as both teams made it all the way, like, winner's side, if I recall correctly. Or not winner's side. Green made it all the way to the winner's finals, eventually losing, getting into the loser's finals, and then losing. And then also the gold roster did end up losing in the loser's final as well. So looking for some revenge, but some revenge is also on the table here from the Tigres as they do manage to get the first goal here. Edgar Garcia is going to be able to secure goal number one right off the bat. Get that one out of the way and now force the Saints to try to make a move here. But you know this green roster, they are going to be ready to go pedal to the metal, use what they have and feel free to smash your car while doing it. Jazzy off the backboard. Can he get it himself? He could. But Alex is going to be able to push that one aside. Sai is there for a little interference. Sparkle Pato is going to be able to stop the initial shot. Edgar is also there to at least push this to the side. Off to Fabso. But Fabso is clearing it or push attempt did not quite work. It's going to be pushed off to Alex. Alex is going to successfully be able to clear this for a second. Fabso is back there. Redirection, actually. What a fantastic pass. What a fantastic shot. Coming out here from the Sinclair Saints green roster. Fabso literally from his own crease, basically respawning from a demo, turns into a passing opportunity. And we have ourselves a tie game. Well fought for both teams here so far. Edgar now chasing this into the Sinclair Saints zone. Jazzy going to now intercept and push all the way on into the Tigres zone. Looks to try and take it themselves. It got off a post, but Sparkle Pato also got a piece of it to keep that one out of the Tigres zone, or in their net rather. And now it's up to Jazzy and Sai along the side, try and clear this away from the Saints zone. Fabso to the skies is going to find Edgar, but gets past Edgar. Now in the offensive zone, trying to push us on over the side, does not quite get there. Alex beats them out to it. A little bit of a drag race, but Sai is going to get a piece of it to at least knock it up into the air, wait for some reinforcements to come back before making their next move. Jazzy, one, two push here alongside one of the other Saints players, but could not get that one on target. Sai once again drops it on down in the center of the crease. Put some good defense coming out here from the Tigres to keep that one away from the center. Keep that away from actually becoming a shot. The Saints, they're all over the place, but they're kind of stuck in their own zone now for a moment. That is going to be Edgar trying to pass it off, but Sai collects it, flips it on over, looks for another Saint. Redirection on target, but it is going to be Edgar Garcia with the save once again. Going to try and turn this into an offensive opportunity. Pop fly ball in center field, but it is going to be Fabso who stops that before it goes any further towards the Sinclair Saints net. 
Still kind of stuck in center field, however, though. Jassy tries to pitch this one off the ground. It yeah, with some pretty, pretty decent speed to it, but could not beat the defender. Still stuck in center field. Off to Alex, who's going to bring it over to Edgar, but still kind of stuck in the Tigres zone. Fabso alongside Alex, a little bit of a one-on-one. -on -one. What a good defensive play there from Fabso, but actually there's going to be Edgar as well, who <laughs> nearly, nearly had the offensive opportunity. Fabso, double touch off the wall, not quite this time by. It is going to be stopped by Alex. Going to be sent to the St. Clair zone, but PZY or Sai is going to be able to stop this for the time being. One thing just been informed of as well, if you want the dedicated stream and the dedicated goal actually here, as that is going to be Sai finding goal number two in this one. But if you in particular want to follow only one of the teams of uh, on our Saints rosters, exclamation mark gold or exclamation mark green will provide you a link to a side stream that strictly follows that one team. And then of course, if you're trying to follow along the bracket, exclamation mark bracket in the Twitch chat will also bring that up for you. So you can follow the Saints progress throughout this CRL Open Tournament. A little bit messy off the face off to start this one off here. Minute 35 left on the clock, but it is going to be Jazzy who slowly but surely brings this right on in and actually kind of used Alex as a centering tool. That thing crawled through the crease, but could not quite find somebody to push that one on through. One more opportunity. When in doubt, do it yourself. Don't wait for anybody else. Beautifully done there from Jazzy, who was able to pick it up after Sai got the initial one. But there you go, with the one-two punch to knock out goal number three here for St. Clair Saints Green. Winner of this match is going up against the University of Utah. They are ready and waiting in what I believe would be the quarterfinals. Nope, I'm a little bit early. Almost the quarterfinals. That'll be winner's round four. And if this is anything like last week, you can expect best of three matches all the way up until basically the semifinals of each side. So very, very tense matches. Very, very tense shot and save coming out here. Jazzy, how about taking it yourself once again? Just absolutely floating. Never mind Rocket League with race cars. You might as well be playing with a hover car with how he just kind of stays floating above the crossbar like that. But Sai, going to stop off the offensive opportunity there from Medgar. From center field, it is going to be cleared into the Tigres zone. Tigres need to find two, and they need to find two quickly if they want to bring this game to overtime and keep that winner's bracket run alive here. But as it stands right now, the Saints are doing a pretty good job at killing off the clock and also continuing to put on some goal pressure as well. As the clock winds down, 10 seconds and counting. Head is going to find themselves a hat trick here, pushing this game up to a 4 1. And another solid pass from Fabso is going to line things up here for Sai. And of course, the action does not stop. You can expect the next Saints Claire Saints gold matchup, their winner's round four game versus GVSU is on deck and should be starting momentarily once this game finishes. So stick around for that as well. As we do see the clock wind on down here, Tigre is putting up a good fight, but not enough to get the job done this time. As we now jump into the match of St. Clair Saints Gold versus GVSU. Alpha K and Wheats here on the side of GVSU finding themselves an early lead here in game number one. Meanwhile, Byers, Christian, and Vesh looking for the rebound to try and get themselves back into this one. GVSU in their own right, of course, a very, very solid squad in regards to Rocket League. We have seen them many a time on the field throughout the years. And it's always one of the ones on my calendar, personally, where I know that, uh, hey, don't sleep. <laughs> you never know what can happen. 
Barris up into the GVSU zone, but it's going to be immediately taken down by Alpha. Another shot opportunity there for the Saints. Going to just hit the post. Alpha pushing it on through. Going to push Barris around, but not enough to redirect as this thing's going right back into GVSU zone. Christian looking for one of their own teammates. Vesh is going to get the shot, but it does go wide. Barris, though, is going to stop this thing from going past center field. Christian going to try and slow ball this one into the crease, but not enough to actually make it past the defenders. One more time, though. Barris is going to find themselves the tying goal after the pass from Vesh finds him on target. Off the corner, and sure enough, found Barris already up into the skies. 2.22 left to go, and we have this thing all tied up at one. Off the faceoff, we're going right back into the GVSU zone. Barris is in hot pursuit, just absolutely smokes K, gets them off of the field for the time being. 2v3, small opportunity there for the Saints, but did get, kind of get, the, get kind of stuck up in the midfield, so weren't able to capitalize on the briefest of power plays that they had. Lob shot going towards the crease. Christian not going to be able to be the first one there. K on the side of GVSU is. So Vesh off the roof looking for a passing opportunity. Ends up getting intercepted by Alpha, who just kind of uh, sloppily clears it, but ends up getting passed on over to K. So I guess it works out this time by. Vesh off to the skies once again, but this one's going to the corner. Not going to be able to control it back and forth a little bit of a tennis game so far here and this one Barris breakaway opportunity <laughs> and sure enough found the opportunity to take it in himself and does not make a mistake as Vesh you can see in the replay just being an absolute nuisance in the way of the GVSU defenders it may not have been a demo but it's blocking your positioning blocking your path to make the save beautifully done Off the faceoff, immediately going on into the GVSU zone once again. GVSU trying to find a way to clear it. Barris again, just a big line drive from like the middle of the sky, but could not get it past the defender. K who stops that one this time. Just over a minute to go now. Saints trying to hang on to this one goal lead, but granted GVSU, when they've had their opportunities, they have been strong at punishing. But the Saints have not been giving them a good opportunity in the last like two, three minutes or so. Just looking for an opening. This could be one, but that is going to be Vesh at the back. Gets past the one defender, but there is still Wheats back there. He ends up trying to clear, but just goes to Christian. Another opportunity to make, make the play themselves. But K is going to be able to make the save after Christian nearly jukes the field. Now it's going to be K, brings it on over, but oh my goodness, Christian from offense to defense, breakaway opportunity for Vesh, and he's going to tuck that one on in. All hands were on deck for the offense, but there was nobody to catch Vesh this time, and there is no offsides in Rocket League. Beautifully done to capitalize on this one. Tough, but not impossible. 25 seconds left to go here for GVSU to try and tie this thing up. K trying to do some defense alongside Alpha, who is in control as of this moment, trying to go up against Vesh. Good little punt there from Wheats, but actually the Saints take this thing the other way, and it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. And let's see, is that another hat trick? Hopefully nobody was taking uh, any bets, because that's another one here for Barris. If I had made a drink to chug a, a, a chug a jug of juice for every hat trick, I would be on the sidelines with a sore stomach with the way these Saints have been playing so far today. Beautifully done, to say the least. But honestly, okay. GVSU almost found goal number two there. But that is going to be game number one here of this winner's round four game going over to St. Clair Saints gold. And then, of course, looking over towards St. Clair Saints Green, they are just getting themselves checked in right now. University of Utah is their next opponent. Still in best of three match. Winners of those games will go up against the winner of George Mason and Purdue University Gold. So we're starting to see some more familiar faces, some more familiar teams from other esports as well as from these CRL Opens. 
for green themselves, I think their biggest worries today are probably going to end up being Maryville. And then probably Akron, just from the briefest of analysis that I can see right here right now. Everywhere, at least everyone else in terms of, I guess, my opinion, I think we would be the favorites in. But as I always say, I would love to be wrong. Everybody else, let's see what you got. All right, game number two here between GVSU and St. Clair Saints Gold. Saints taking that first game in a rather convincing fashion after the halfway point anyway. GVSU started off hot, but Gold just took it and ran past that halfway point. That is going to be K from GVSU, nearly finding an opportunity to break out, but immediately intercepted, immediately passed up to Vesh. Vesh off the backboard, rebound. Right, going to hit the crossbar again. Barris this time leaves it up for Christian. Double touch, but a save from Wheats to stop that one. Absolute chaos in the crease, but it ends up with solid defense overall. GVSU still hanging in there. Vesh is starting to play a little physical here. Wheats is gone, but that's going to be GVSU's other two players. Alpha and K getting some offensive opportunities, forcing a save from the Saints. Now back the other way. Going to end up being stopped by Alpha. Never mind. Alpha ends up kind of teeing it off. Loose ball in the crease, but it is going to be GVSU's Wheats and then K to stop that, but they could not get the rebound. Barris finds the ball at the top of the crease and is able to punish after the fantastic pass from Vesh. Loving these passes that I'm seeing so far out of the St. Clair Saints gold roster. Normally when I think of our Saints and like heavy passing plays kind of teams, I do normally think of our green roster, but gold is showing that they've been uh, putting something on the drawing board. And how about another one on the board here for Barris, who has been absolutely phenomenal since joining this team. Both weeks that they've been playing here in the CRL Open Qualifiers has been absolutely fantastic. And Christian and Vesh alongside have just been doing a great job overall. Of course, the Saints may have themselves that two-goal lead, but it does not mean they're going to let up on the gas. We're going to see another drop opportunity, and with all the demos happening in the crease, it was almost like a smoke screen there. I couldn't even see where the ball actually was. But it does end up going to Vesh. Off to Christian, who's going to pass this one off the backboard. It's going to be K, though, going to stop this one. It's got Alpha with them. Off to the corner, though. Ends up hitting the post. Second shot hits the post as well. GVSU do find some opportunities here and there, but not enough to get it done. And then immediately caught on the back foot, Christian going to find their first one of this game. After Vesh again just finds the opening. Absolute playmaker here so far in these couple series that we have seen. Passes absolutely on point. And of course, as this one's going on, if anyone's wondering what's going on with St. Clair Saints Green, they're still getting checked into the next matchup. So that one will be happening momentarily here. And what on earth did I just witness <laughs> this time by? Did two Saints manage to have a breakaway? Yeah, you had all the time in the world there. And they're gonna secure game number four, or game number four, goal number four rather here in this second game. Starting to kind of run away with this a little bit. Top the face off right back into the GVSU zone. Taking a look at some of the other brackets at the same time here as we see GVSU having a pretty solid opportunity, but again, deja vu. Admittedly going for the offense, punished with an immediate <laughs> counterattack and goal. So far here, for those curious about how St. Clair College Academy is going, they have been on a bit of a tear themselves as well. 2-0 victory against Cal Blue, 2-0 victory against Kaiser University, and now are in the winner's round four going up against Southern Mississippi. So 
Good to see that all three teams still sitting pretty in the winner's side here. Of course, this gold roster is sitting pretty here in this game. Two minutes still on the clock, but they have themselves a lot of insurance, to say the least. Lots of wiggle room for mistakes. Christian in the corner is going to keep this thing popped up in the sky. A little bit of a counterattack going to come out from GVSU this time by into the Saints corner. Alpha is there. Shot on target is going to end up hitting the post. Nobody is able to actually turn themselves around and hit that though. That is an absolute heartbreaker for GVSU as they were wide open in the crease to try and make something happen, but could not quite find their traction to make that happen. Vesh now alongside in the GVSU zone. The playmaker and quite the stylist as well, nearly making that one happen. The crossbar is going to not be your friend this time by but a solid attempt nonetheless. Bear step into the corner, looks for Christian. Christian was going the other way though. Bear is gonna send this one back. And now that is going to be Bears again now in the corner. Just, yeah, just pop fly ball at this point. This is a long day. Don't burn yourself out too badly. Oh yeah, they're still able to put some of this offensive pressure on. 30 seconds to go here. One more opportunity, and sure enough, let's chug another jug of juice, because that one's going to be another hat trick here for Barrist. Fantastic series. So far, fantastic tournament overall here for him and the rest of the Saints. <laughs> oh my goodness, that face-off was actually kind of brutal. That was an immediate line drive over towards the GVSU net. Did end up going wide, but would have been pretty crazy if it worked. But there we go. GVSU is on the board. K is going to be able to secure that one after Wheat pops it up. And puts it on through. That's, that sounds good as nobody wants to touch the ball off that face off. I think everybody here might be getting a little bit exhausted with how many games end up happening in such a short period of time. But with GVSU falling over to the lowers, they will have a couple of moments to kind of collect themselves and get back going for the lower bracket side of things. And I don't know if Green has actually started. So Green is actually going to be starting things up in just a moment's time. So I tell you what, this is lining up perfectly for the sake of content. Let's hop on over here. St. Clair Saints Green versus the University of Utah. It's showing that the St. Clair Saints Green roster is currently up a game. I'm, I am not sure if that is correct, but we will see momentarily. Because I feel like they would have just gotten into this one. But as it stands right now, we have ourselves a tie zero zero game 30 seconds into this one. And just like that, that is going to be goal number one going over to the Saints after a little bit of uh, trickery in the top of the crease. It looks like it looked like one of our Saints is going to come through and kind of bounce it off the wall but that was not the case at all. And sure enough, it is actually just game number one here. So my apologies for uh, for confusing anybody if I had called it game number two. But yeah, this is of course game number one. Saints gonna start things off nice and pretty here with one goal on the board before the minute even goes on through. Fabso was looking the head hunt, but now it's gonna be Utah trying to push the St. Clair Saints green roster into their own zone. Stops at halfway, shot on target, and Branjay is going to be able to get Utah back into this game nice and quickly. Bonds was able to bring this one off the wall, and as you can see, Bran was right there to secure it. Caught the Saints going for some boost and punished with a goal. Off the face off right into the University of Utah uh, hood as it goes into the Saints zone, rather. 
I'm used to seeing the faceoffs going into the <laughs> offensive side of things, so it kind of tricked me up for just a second here. But the Saints were on the back foot pretty well immediately, and the rebound again. Bonds is going to be able to collect that ball and score after finding an awkward instance here defensively. It just gets right under Fabso, actually, and unfortunately here for Sai. Just could not get there back in time. So, okay, University of Utah, I see ya. You've got some moves. Let's uh, let's keep this going. Fabso immediately off the faceoff is going to drill this thing directly into the Utah zone. Sai is up in the sky to try and meet the defender. Into the corner, wide open net, and there we go. Fabso, goal number one of this game here after a fantastic pass, leaving nobody in the net here for Utah. And Fab, so right angle to tip that thing through. Three twenty on the clock, so plenty of time. And the so far stellar game we have been seeing, probably the closest we've seen so far today. Two two as of this moment, and right back into the state zone we go. That's going to be Sai. Up to the sky once again, tries to get it past Bonds, but Bonds is going to be able to get a tire on it to at least stop that thing from going towards the net. Off the corner, good little drag race. And okay, Jazzy just single-handedly bumped two of them out of the way. Fantastic defense coming out from Jazzy. That could have been a breakaway opportunity. Still kind of stuck in the same zone, however. Big shot, just going to barely hit the post. Around center field, gonna be picked up by Fabso, just got reloaded on a full tank of boost. Jazzy is here for some assistance, however. Hands off directly in front of the net. Is anyone able to make some contact with it? There is, sure enough, a shot. Pop fly, though, in the crease. Jazzy going to take the shot. Bonds, though, big save, keeping that away from the backboard. Hydro and the rest of this University of Utah squad able to clear for just a moment's time, but right back into their own zone we go, and that is going to be a fantastic double touch here for Jazzy to take the lead in this game. Sai bounces this thing up, and Jazzy uses that backboard exactly as you would love to see it, and drills that thing dead center of the net. And just like that, now the Saints are running away with it. I look away for the briefest of seconds, and we have ourselves a 4-2 game after Fabso just finds an opening and takes it themselves right off the, the right wall. Now two goals for Fabso here in this game. Just under two minutes left to go. Saints not going to run away with this one just yet, but they found themselves a fantastic opening to maybe let themselves breathe a little here in this matchup. Bonds is going to try and make me eat my words, however. Looking for that Utah squad to try and answer right back. And they did have themselves a solid opportunity, forcing the Saints to get a little bit scrappy on the defensive side of things. But eventually cleared out. Jazzy is here looking for goal number two of the game if they could find that opportunity. But it is going to go right back into the Saints zone. Sai as well as Bonds duking it out there. Fabso's in there. A little bit of a battle in the corner. Pop fly shot is going to actually go above everybody, but it gets the crossbar. One more opportunity. Fabso is in the net to make the save. And some very, very scary opportunities here for the University of Utah. They get another one on the board versus the Saints, but could not quite capitalize on the opportunity. Finally cleared. Fabso, breakaway opportunity, and that's going to be yet another goal, yet another hat trick here in this one. And then as this one is going on, Gold is getting ready to start their next one. They are going into the winner's quarterfinals up against UT Dallas. We'll check in with Green in a couple of minutes to see how they're doing. But as of right now, it's actually our St. Clair Saints Gold roster a little bit on the back foot here versus UT Dallas. For the Dallas squad, we do have... <laughs> we have Blippi, Dalton, and Luby. Of course, anybody who uh, 
Anybody who has kids would kind of laugh at the name Blippi being put on a Rocket League team. But we now, of course, have Luby trying to push this one on through. Sees Dalton up in the skies. What a big knockdown, but a big save here from Vesh to keep this game within one. Vesh now swinging the other way, but it is going to be pushed aside. Off to Blippi here on the corner. Vesh is still here looking for a defender. Maybe tries to take it himself, but could not put it away. Does get taken by Dalton, who gets a demo. Redirection, though, from Barris was almost on target. Caught him flying in the skies. Could not quite finish it off, though. Christian gets one. And the redirection, actually, from Vesh. I'm going to call that completely intentional. Fantastic turn of events here where just the slightest of redirection stops it from hitting the goaltender. Big play here for the St. Clair Saints gold roster to tie this thing up. And then a breakaway off the, off the face off, flips it up. Vesh with his second of the game, second in less than 10 seconds. What a face off, Vesh able to find it. Fakes the first initial shot and just absolutely snaps the axles off Dalton's car. A fantastic turn of events here for your St. Clair Saints gold roster. And I'll tell you what, if I'm UT Dallas, I'm probably kind of mad at this point here. And I'm ready to start smashing some things, in particularly the uh, the cars on the enemy teams, of course. But we got it into the St. Clair Saints side of the net. And sure enough, going to challenge Christian immediately, knock him away from the ball. But now Vesh is the one in control of it. Going to take it all the way himself. It is going to be pushed aside, but Barris and I believe Christian are both there for reinforcements if necessary. A bit of an awkward bounce is going to make it so that Vesh doesn't get all of it, but it is enough to get it to Barris, who gets one, two, pass it off to the teammate who happens to be driving by, which is going to kill actually a ton of time off of the clock here. So good on the Saints to capitalize on that situation as we see yet another one. Christian going to get the secure on that goal after the offensive opportunity from UT Dallas just kind of fell on its face. You get antsy, you get nervous, you get a little upset, you play aggressive, and there's nobody home to get the defensive side of things taken care of, and the Saints are not going to let you get away with that. You see time and time again, that's pretty much been the name of the game for most of the series that we've seen here today. 30 seconds left to go. Saints two goal lead Dalton and the rest of this UT Dallas squad looking to answer back and answer quickly. They had the opportunity, but they couldn't find a finishing blow. Luby is nearly going to find that shot. Rebound on target there from Blippi, but it is going to be stopped by Barrist. Still stuck in the UT Dallas zone as the time is going to end up ticking down. St. Clair Saints Gold are going to successfully take game number one here versus UT Dallas. We joined them at a time where UT Dallas was starting to get some heat, but unfortunately for UT Dallas, could not keep that going. Those uh, two quick goals there from Vesh really putting a damper onto their... Uh, onto their momentum as so we hop on back here with St. Clair Saints Green who are looking to get the finishing blow here onto the University of Utah, knock them down into that lower bracket. But this is of course a 1-1 game so far. Jazzy looking for it and just like that, we hop into the game and then Jazzy does something sick. I don't know what it is about today, but it seems to be the way it's going. Up in the skies all by himself. Hydro, no thank you. Oh, there's nobody else in net. Okay, I think I'll see myself in. Beautifully done. The secure goal number two here of this game for the Saints. Just off the face off again. Sai with the centering pass off the wall. It was a pretty good pass, but nobody was gonna be able to secure that one. Fabso in the corner and Sai doing the demos, just leaving the door wide open for the Saints to take as much time as they want in the Utah zone. Pass off the center, big angle actually, shot on target, rebound is not going to make the right contact, so it's just going to go right into the corner. Jazzy off the backboard over to Fabso, going to be stopped. 
Bond's gonna shut that one down. Now maybe Hydro and the rest of Utah could find themselves an offensive opportunity. Good demo there from Hydro getting in front of the ball and denying the offensive opportunity. And Branch is going to secure goal number two here for the University of Utah. Good play from Hydro and the rest of the Utah squad to really get that breakout going and for Branch to find the opening, tuck that one under the St. Clair Saints defender's car. Off the faceoff, right down the middle. Going to be staying in that center zone where Sai is going to pick it up for the time being. Look for the pinch up against the ground. Not going to quite get it this time, though, but it does go over to Jazzy. Jazzy going to drop this thing on down. Gets past one, gets past a second. Looks for a teammate. Was successful, but not enough to actually get a shot. And it's going the other way. Bonds is going to absolutely capitalize. Kind of use the Saints game plan against them here. Three Saints just around the crease. Well, lob it above their heads and watch them run. Utah up one. About minute 35 or so left in this second game. Utah looking to bring Saints to their first game three of the entire tournament across both teams here. And of course, Saints still have plenty of pressure onto this Utah squad. We see Fabso flying on through. Size not far away as well. As it's a pop fly towards center field. Tries to get an interception. Actually, good demo. Is there anybody else back there? There's only Hydro. Hydro is going to be able to push this back, though. And Branch did respawn right in the path of the ball, so it worked out. Big shot again here, though, from Fabso. Going to be denied. One more ball cleared into the corner here for the Saints. Branch is going to pick it up, but ends up being a pass actually over to a Saints player. Could have been scary, but Sai is up there. Got to center that thing, knocks it down center. Can he get the rebound on it? He gets a piece of it, but not enough to shoot. But Jazzy is there. Their second goal of this game here to tie up the game at three. Lots of touches and finally, what looks like the shot was going to come from side did not get the angle, but it ended up teeing it up perfectly for Jazzy to come on in and secure that one. So now we have ourselves a tie game. See if we can maybe get our first overtime of the tournament at this rate. But with the Saints like this and Jazzy scoring like this, cups up. Let's have another one. Hat trick for Jazzy. Up in the skies, in the crease, seems to be where he feels at home. Constant, perfect angle shots from just above the crossbar. Just master class of aerial contact and aerial combat, to say the least here from Jazzy so far in this series, or in this tournament as a whole. Sai, of course, going to spring this one on down into the corner. Fabso is here as well, gets past one, going to actually get past another but it is eventually going to be cleared off here. 10 seconds left to go. The Saints just have to hang on a little bit longer and the winner's quarter's berth will be right there for them. Five to go, but it's going right into the Saints zone. Utah squad will not say die. And Bonds actually, okay, for the first time in this tournament, the opponents get themselves a hat trick here. Good game here for Bonds, securing goal number three for themselves and goal number four for the University of Utah. Tying this up at four with two seconds left to go. And with that, we have ourselves our first overtime. The University of Utah proving to be quite the combatants here up against us. But uh, here, you know, or the St. Clair Saints green roster brings it into the corner, has some help with them. Both of the Saints, all three Saints actually, are in an offensive position. Gonna be Sai off the roof, looking for a pinch off the ground. Not gonna quite get the angle they were looking for. Jazzy fakes the shot, passes it through the center, but nobody home. That ball's going backwards. Sai's gonna get back just in time, however, up to the skies as the University of Utah player, but it gets cleared out. Branje gonna try and bring this one right back, but it's cleared right back in the center field once again. Gonna be Jazzy up into the corner. Shot on target. Nope, it's gonna go just barely wide. Jazzy was looking for that redirect, but could not quite get as much of an angle on it as they would have wanted. But now, up in the skies, Jazzy right at home. And make no mistake, it's not even Jazzy. It's Sai putting this one on through. Saints going to the winner's quarterfinals.
Nice. Beautifully done there from the St. Clair Saints green side of things. Able to put away the University of Utah, but good games, of course, the University of Utah. They damn well fought their hardest. And we look forward to maybe seeing them again if they can make that lower bracket run. Hopping back on over here to St. Clair Saints Gold, where Barris, Christian, and Vesh are trying to get the finishing blow up against Blippi, Dalton, and Luby. But with 13 seconds, we have ourselves a 3-3 game after Dalton passes this one up to Luby nicely, gets it past the Saints defender, and the awkward bounce off of Vesh as well to just secure that third goal. Of course, Saints are current, or the Saints Gold roster are currently up 1-0 in this series. I'm sure they would love to finish the job now. Are we b both going to find ourselves with some overtime games back to back here? We just might. Vesh up into the skies, fakes the shot, passes it off, left hand side. Holy smokes, that was a close opportunity. But Luby with the save, going to bring this to overtime. Off the face off, it's going to allow Vesh to absolutely spring into action along that left hand side. Centering pass off the backboard. Redirection coming out here from Christian. Can he get his own pass? He will. Sets up Barris, who is going to be stopped by Blippi. Blippi now down to center field. Not quite going to be able to get past the defense of the Saints. Luby forced to try and control it in their own zone, but it gets intercepted. Christian again just so good at taking the soccer ball off the hood, and he takes it for themselves. Saints Nation have another one. Hat trick for Christian and the go-ahead goal series winning goal for Christian. Well, I hope everybody's been enjoying the show so far here, game after game after game. And so far for the Saints side of things, it's been rather smooth sailing, only finding a little bit of turbulence now in that last match where we did not necessarily drop a game, but we had been brought to overtime. But the challenges are only going to be stronger and tougher as we go along here, especially as we sit on the winner's side. Both of the brackets have some very, very tough opponents that we have still yet to face. People like Maryville, Concord, and many, many others still to come in this tournament. So while we have the briefest of opportunity where both teams are actually not in matches, you know how I was saying, it's time to chug some juice. No, it's time to chug some Timmy's coffee, I tell you what. So we're going to take a very, very quick five-minute break, get the players checked in, and we'll be back on the field in no time.
All right, Saints Nation, we are back in action here, and it looks like, once again, starting off immediately with a goal. Going up against Purdue University, their gold squad. Meanwhile, St. Clair Saints Green starting things off nice and quick, getting one on the board, catching us off guard, and getting themselves the lead nice and quick. Purdue gold roster, we do have Duck, Enchanted, and Plain. And of course, your St. Clair Saints Green roster. We've got Papso, Jazzy, and Psy. St. Clair Saints in control of the ball for the time being. Never mind, actually, a big robbery here coming up from the police office. Duck, but it right goes the other way. Jazzy nearly finding a way around Enchanted, but is going to be able to push it to at least center field, or Fabso and Psy are able to duke it out. Puts it off the backboard. Redirection from Fabso would have been on target, but Duck is there to stop that one. One more time there for Jazzy, but Plain is going to be able to stop it right in the on that left post. Plain off the side. That's going to be Jazzy with the demo onto Plain, taking them off the board for at least a moment. But Enchanted is still there as well as Duck. Now Plain back into the action after being demoed, brings it into the right corner. Fabso is there to try and stop the centering attempt, but it's going to be pumped along the wall. Enchanted is there to stop that. Centered in the Saints zone. It's going to be Enchanted tying this thing up one to one. From the corner, from the skies, and unfortunately, Sai could not find a way out of the net to make that one happen. So now, three minutes and 30 seconds are just under that left to go into this first game here which we believe is still best of three action. But we're all tied up at one. Jazzy from center field going to try and take this out and up to the sky is going to be met up there by Plain, who is going to be able to clear it up to Enchanted. Going to be stopped by Fabso actually at the center field line. Duck now sends it up to Enchanted. Enchanted has an opportunity to bring this towards center. It is going to be stopped, however, but Duck is there going to line drive this thing directly into the net. Saints left it open, and Duck with the punish immediately off the wall. Of course, the further along in these tournaments we go, the tougher the starts to get. We're really starting to see it here with Purdue. Of course, a name that we are not unfamiliar with from other esports, but also in the rec league scene as well. So we see now St. Clair Saints Green try passing play up into the skies, but could not knock the thing down to put it towards the net. Going to be brought all the way back through the zone where Jazzy is going to be able to stop this and get past Enchanted, but cannot get past Plain, who's going to pass on over. Duck is waiting up to the skies once again. Enchanted going to control this. Fabso looking for the interception. We'll be able to pass this one off. That is going to be Psy up into the air once again. Off to Jazzy. Jazzy couldn't get control of it, however, so it's going to get pushed back. Fabso actually missed this, so it's going to be a little bit of a drag race here for the Saints and Purdue to try and see if anyone can make a shot off of this. Enchanted, another opportunity, puts it towards the center, but could not quite find someone to shoot the thing. It's now Psy and Enchanted kind of slow balling into the side where Jazzy was able to get the pass, but a big save there from Plain to stop that from actually going towards the net. One more time though for Jazzy, a little bit of a bouncer, going to be stopped and pushed aside. Sai going to try it as well, nobody home, bit of a drag race, but it is going to be stopped by Duck. Had just enough of a head start and enough boost in the tank to stop that from turning into a goal. Good defensive plays there. And what in the world did I just witness? Purdue, after uncrediting their defense, seemed to go on offense the wrong way. Unfortunate there for Duck. I know they're probably trying to knock that thing off the, the backboard or the crossbar to try and send it back out. But uh, I feel like we've all been there. You play this game enough, you, you've been there. But thankfully, that is just a tire. So two and two with a minute 20 left to go here into this winner's quarterfinal matchup. Purdue Gold and St. Clair Saints Green. Enchanted, kind of stuck in the Purdue zone for the time being. Sends it off the duck, back to Enchanted again. Pop fly for Plain. Sai might beat them though, and will bring it right back into the Purdue zone. Centering pass, but is anybody home to take the shot? They are, but a big save from Enchanted to stop Fabso on the shot. 
side, bringing it right back down into the crease. Duck is there ready and waiting, but did not get enough of that shot to try and clear it out. Pop fly ball towards the crease. Sai is there. Fabso is there waiting for the shot opportunity. Takes the shot. It is going to go wide after being deflected off of a defender in front. Once again, the Saints trying to get this in front again. Sai shot on target. Big save from Enchanted, but the rebound pass actually to Jazzy. Jazzy shoots it on forward. And with 30 seconds left in the second goal of the game here, it is going to be Jazzy putting us forward. The defense was solid there for Purdue, but you could only save so many passes, so many shots, until one of them is gonna sneak on through. 30 seconds is a lot of time to work with, however. Never say die yet, but Jazzy looking to try and make a solo play off of that faceoff. Nearly had that one completed, but Plain is gonna be able to stop them. Saints, though, get past one defender. They get past a second, but then they are not gonna be able to get the shot off, so it's just kind of stuck in the Purdue gold zone. Killing some time, doing what they need to do, but Purdue have one more opportunity to try and get themselves a tying goal with a second left on the clock. They still have it. Duck takes to the skies, is going to be able to hold it, but runs into Enchanted. Plane is going to be able to pick it up. Shot on target, going to be saved. It's still live up in the skies. Enchanted is going to be able to keep it there for the moment into the corner, but it is going to hit the ground. Solid effort here for Purdue, but they were not able to find the back of the net. And Sinclair Saints Green are going to take game number one as we check in and see what's up with St. Clair Saints Gold, who actually seem to be up against the Akron Zips, their blue roster. And as of right now, I'm not gonna, or I'll call a spade a spade, but it kind of looks like the Saints are running away with this here so far. As Christian, oh my goodness, he has a hat trick and then some so far here in this game. Christian has probably been the lowest scoring player on the Saints so far and has immediately flipped the switch and it's turned into the goal scorer here in this game. That's not a shot. He's been doing a ton of things in, in his own right that sometimes the scoreboard can't calculate, but my goodness, really showing up here for game number one and Paris as well. Okay, that, that, that's a gimme, come on. It's right on the line, come on, man. Okay, there we go. Let's get another one. Christian with the 5K here in this one. After that ball was on the goal line for what felt like an eternity, Christian is gonna just pop it on in there. Seven the two. Absolute insanity coming out here from the St. Clair Saints Gold roster. Of course, this is the semifinals as well. Vesh is just, okay, what on earth am I seeing here? The Akron Zips, like, if this is the team that I'm used to thinking about, I'm thinking about, like, CRL qualifying teams, and we don't see them get this kind of, uh, kind of match against them, so to speak, very often. But, like I said, it's the beauty of Rocket League. Instead of this being like a traditional sport where time runs out and the score carries over, time runs out and then we just reset the score and try again. Definitely a blessing for Akron this time by. But as you can see, St. Clair Saints Gold running away with game number one. We'll probably check in with Green momentarily once we finish this one off here, but We'll see, we have five up there on defense, and that's going to be more than five down for Akron Zips, as that is going to be Barris once again, finding the back of the net. These angles, man, how? Just how? <laughs> and normie like me cannot compute how these players get the cars in such perfect positions. But just like that, this is going to be St. Clair Saints Green now, who got a head start once again this time. Versus Purdue Gold, this game of two, of course, Saints up one here in the series, looking for their ticket for the winner's semifinal. Everybody's completely out of boost for at least the moment there. Three minutes still to go. Playing and try and clear this thing on out. A little bit of a solo play opportunity as well. But it is going to be Jazzy from the right hand side. Gets the stop out of nowhere. But oh no! Unfortunate timing there for Duck and Enchanted again. They had the perfect passing play. The shot was on target. 
but um, I can hear the what a save pings kind of in my head already because Enchanted unfortunately did a fantastic save, but for the other side. Definitely going to want that one back as that is now going to be Sai who's going to clear this thing all the way into the Purdue zone, stop all the pressure that they had for the time being. Fabso as well as their plane's going to try and get involved as well. Enchanted trying to stop Sai, but that's two Saints going the other way. Are there any defenders to even help out at this point? Yes, there is. Duck is there. Enchanted plane have made it back as well, so Saints not able to capitalize on that two-on-one breakout opportunity. But, of course, they are in the lead. No harm, no foul as of this moment. And then the catch up from what I was just told on that first game for uh, Gold versus Akron. That ended up being 11 to 2. Holy smokes. <laughs> that is definitely an impressive one there for Gold. Let's uh, see if they can do that again. Incredible job there for the Gold roster versus Akron Zips. As we now see the Saints green roster trying to put on some pressure here to Purdue goal. The second goal right now would be absolutely heartbreaking for Purdue. And nice shot opportunity there from Jazzy it is going to be stopped by Enchanted. They're keeping this one within one, but Saints green looking for that semi-final ticket and it is right on the doorstep. In fact, it is just a minute away if they can hang on to this lead. Pass off the duck here now as we go into the St. Clair Saints green zone. Enchanted, gonna pump it down on into the other corner for the Saints. Plane is waiting there, but immediately going to get like messed with sort of in the corner. Tries to pass it back to Enchanted. Enchanted was debating on going to the skies, but realized that the Saints defender is already up there. Better off to run back. And off the backboard it goes, gonna go right back into the Saints zone where Sai is there ready to collect it. Plane does not make contact with it, so they're a player down. And Sai with the cherry on top solo play from one end of the arena to the other, securing that second goal of the game. I'll tell you what, though, score is not going to do this matchup justice because Purdue Gold definitely had themselves some opportunities. I better not close this out, otherwise I'm going to curse this so badly, aren't I? Duck is right there off the ceiling with a solo play of their own. Fantastic job and some decent goaltender interference coming out there from, I believe that was either Enchanted or Plain. To keep this one within honesty, I should not do my closer out right now because you never know what could happen as that ball is going towards the Saints net. Very, very scary here for the Saints. Of course, you may have the lead, but it is not for certain. Duck with control of it for the moment, but it's in the Purdue zone. Sent off to the Saints and this thing's bouncing directly towards the net. Good night, Purdue. That is going to be a 2-1 victory here for Saints in game number two and a 2-0 win overall. And that'll move the green roster into the winner's semifinal. As we now see a little bit of a change in scenery here for the St. Clair Saints gold matchup. After the Akron Zips took an absolute beating in game number one, 11 to two, they are actually the ones up 2-0 here in game number two. So download complete, possibly here for the Akron Zips, looking to fire on back here as that is going to be Bullseye five up and Patty here on the side of Akron. Looking to try and keep this lead here up against St. Clair Saints Gold. Good passing play, gonna flick this one over into the Saints corner, just killing off more time, waiting for a passing opportunity. Gonna be broken up though by the Saints. Bullseye does stop the clear from actually going far though. Doesn't have much boost to make the play, but does get the pass off. Big shot, big save. Vesh could have stopped that one from what looked like a sure goal. Same thing again, Vesh with the second save on two shots that were gonna be like dead center of the net had he not been there. Fantastic defense. <laughs> Demos absolutely everywhere in the middle of this second game, but Saints with no goals as of this moment. Definitely surprising once we, of course it's definitely surprising considering how game number one went. 
And now Vesh up into the skies, but no boost in the tank whatsoever. Going to force Barris up there. And actually a fantastic bounce there for Barris, but it is going to be sent right back into the Saint zone. Bullseye nearly had a shot opportunity, but could not get past the defender on the Saint side. Right back into the Saints side once again. The two passes off the post. Fantastic opportunity once again here for Zips. As five up was literally inches away from putting what would be goal number three for the Zips this time by. And there, Barris flips past one, but could not get past the additional defender. Five up making their way back and playing the defensive game. Kind of stuck in the midfield. They're finally going to see the Saints break out once again into the Akron Zip zone. Christian. Had control for a second, gonna be turned over, however. Besh, 50-50, up against Patty here on the zip side. He is gonna end up going into the St. Clair Saints zone. Awkward bounce, though, for the zips. It's actually gonna be now Vesh pushing it on forward, looking for the centering pass over into the zips crease, but could not get it past the defender once again. You can see the Saints have plenty of ideas to try and make the play happen, but they're not able to get that final touch to put that thing towards the net. Christian does have Barris on the other side of the field, looking to try and take it themselves. Could not quite get there. Barris on the wall, looking for the bounce and crossover. Could not quite get it, however. Christian demoing one off the field. Vesh puts this one into the Akron zip zone, but could not chase it. Five up was able to clear a shot. It's going to be a little bit wide, but forces two of the Saints to go diving for it. Besh taken off the field for just a moment's time. Five up in the corner alongside Patty. Patty wins the 50 off the corner, sends it towards the net, but nobody is there to get that final piece until five up is able to collect it. Looks for the final tap and five up tucks that thing in under the crossbar on that left hand side. That is going to be goal number three here for the Akron Zips. And from going 11 and two, to possibly shutting out the St. Clair Saints gold roster. Here in game number two would be an absolute upset. And since we are, of course, in the winner's semifinals, according to the website, this should be a best of five in theory. Last week it wasn't, so we're still trying to figure that out, so bear with us in that regards. But in theory, that could have just been a very, very successful download opportunity here for the Akron Zips if they can keep playing like this because they are absolutely doing a fantastic job defensively and offensively here in game number two. Time is going to tick down and sure enough, it is what it is for the Saints this time by. Could not quite find the offensive footing that they were looking for, but you still have at least one more game to make it happen. 3-0 for the Zips here in game number two. And of course, checking around with the, the green roster, waiting for their next matchup, which should be happening very, very soon. And sure enough, it's the other Akron squad. So we cannot escape the Zips, it seems like this time by, interestingly enough. So they'll be ready to play that one. Their winner's semi-final matchup will be happening in just a couple of moments, I am sure. And then where in the world are the gold and the academy squads that are currently playing? Um, like I was saying before, I don't have a camera that can uh, travel all the way to Kentucky. So they are currently playing in another event um, at another, another university, I think. The Bluegrass something or other. I keep forgetting the name of it. I literally just went to go look this up like five minutes ago and it slipped my mind. Oh dear. But nonetheless, a busy weekend here for the gold and academy rosters as they're playing in both CRL and the Bluegrass Tournament. But hopping along in here with St. Clair Saints Gold as this is gonna be game three, possibly to the cider. If this is not a best of five. Is that the, as I say, if, because again, as per the website, this game should be a best of five, but last week it was not, so a little bit unsure in that regard, so bear with me for that. But we are now going to have Akron Zips moving on through a one on one versus Christian. Christian going to get the better of five up this time. Another good pop fly defense there for Christian, but watch out for the knock. Oh my goodness, Christian again from his own net, able to make the save. Was basically in the very, very back and came back right in time, making about three saves within like a 10 second span. Beautifully done. 
may not necessarily count on the scorecards, but it definitely counts on our hearts, because that is keeping us off the scoreboard. Or keeping Akron off the scoreboard, if you know what I mean. Akron zips blue, though, however, doing a fantastic job of continuing to apply pressure to the Saints roster. This ball has not left the Saints zone really since the game began. Bullseye waiting for Besh to make the move. Tries to pop it through the center, but couldn't be sent around over to a Saints defense. Besh tries to challenge, not much boost left in the tank. He gets a little bit of a piece of it, but not enough to really put it towards the net. So it's gonna be cleared immediately. Bullseye right on the ball immediately, does have some help. Puts it off the board again from the skies. Big shot there from Patty, but a bigger save there from Barrist. Able to keep that one out. It's tied 0-0 still. But if we take a look, at if there was a shot counter on this, uh, overlay. I'm sure that the Saints would have a zero there as well. They have not had the opportunity at all really towards that Akron Zips blue net until maybe right now. Finally clearing this thing out. Shot is going to be on target and oh man, that thing bounced but it is going to end up hitting the crossbar. Fantastic opportunity there for the Saints but the post is going to deny them this time by awkward bounce here. Besh going to have to run back. Big demo is going to take Barrist out of there. Besh off to the skies once again. Stops two. He stops two members of the Akron Zips at the center field mark. And another opportunity here for Christian. But the goaltender was able to power through the interference from the Saints offender. And now two minutes left to go. We are still tied at two for a possible final game. Christian redirecting that one into the Akron Zip section. That's going to be a shot on target. And Barrist actually is going to find the goal. Keeps it low, puts it left side, and is able to secure that one. Just splits the defense and makes it work. Sometimes it doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be on target. And as of right now, that is going to put the Saints ahead here. Zips immediately, though, onto the counterattack. Big shot goes wide, however. Vesh, though, counters, has an opportunity to break off for himself. Is not going to be able to get past Bullseye, however. Another shot is going to be lobbed wide. Christian is there, still messing with some of the defenders. Barrist is there, looking for the centering pass. Going to be stopped immediately. Two members of the Saints on that left-hand side. Barrist crossed the field. Vesh looks for the shot. It's going to be immediately denied, though, by Bullseye, who pops it on up to one of the Akron Zips tries to clear it out, but it does not end up working. Christian up to the skies to find that one. Could not find the Saints member in the air, though. So we're right back once again into the Saints zone. Shot on target here from five up is going to be stopped by Christian. That had a corner pick right in the making, but could not get past Christian. One minute to go for the Saints to find themselves a winner's final berth here in this one, if this is a best of three. If this is a best of five, we still have some more games to play. But of course, I apologize, not quite sure as of yet. Five up, fighting so hard in this corner, though, has been able to keep this in the Saints zone for so long. But Barris looking to split all three of the defenders of Akron. Could not get that one on target. Might have an opportunity here for Christian, though. Gets past two. Looking for one more, but a big stop there from Bullseye to stop the shot and get some control of it. Hand this one off to Patty, who's going to get it stolen immediately by Barrist. Barrist to Vesh in the corner. 15 seconds to go here for the Zips to tie this one up or for the Saints to move on to either the next game or the next round. Five to go, Patty with control, never mind. Christian with the robbery, looking to put the seal of the deal on this one. And he's absolutely going to close this one out with two seconds left to go. Patty gave it up and just there was no turning back for Christian after that one. Saints lead 2-0 with two seconds left and looking to put the cherry on top on this series. If this is the best of three. And with people leaving the match, that very well could be the uh, the that very well could be the symbol we were looking for for that being a best of three. And being told seems like everybody's left the lobby, so that could have been the best of three. So if that is the case, that is going to be the gold roster breaking their way into the winners finals, which is absolutely huge. If we remember last week when we were following the Saints gold roster 
in the first CRL qualifier. They did make it, I believe, to either the winner's quarters or winner's semis, eventually lost there, and then had to take a little bit of a loser's run all the way through the bracket. But this way, they're going all the way to the winner's finals, guaranteeing them a top three in this group. But obviously don't want to stop there. Only two teams are able to get into the day two action for tomorrow. We are still waiting on the green matchup to um, so wait on the green matchup to get started here, which would be, I believe, their semifinal matchup. And that was versus the other Akron team. So may you see a little bit of, uh, not sibling rivalry, but a little bit of team camaraderie, a little bit of team revenge here, possibly, if the Akron Zips gold roster have that little extra fire versus that green roster of ours. Would definitely love to see it. But of course, we are still waiting for the lobby to get on started. If you want to take a look during this break at any of the brackets from any of the teams, including the Academy roster, exclamation mark bracket in the Twitch chat will bring up the links inside of the Twitch chat and you can go follow there. And then if you do want to follow specifically one team, exclamation mark gold or exclamation mark green will give you the separate stream link because we're going to give you the best bits of it here on the main channel for the Saints Gaming CA. But if you do want to follow specifically one team, that option is also there for you. But with that being said, while we do await for this uh, next matchup to start, I think it's time for a quick water break. So we will be right back with the green roster as soon as they hit the field.
and off we go once again, but this time it is going to be some winner's semifinal action. We have our St. Clair Saints green roster of Fabso, Jazzy, and Cy up against Akron Gold. We got Jonathan, MDG, and Oxy. Of course, our other Saints squad, St. Clair Saints Gold, they just actually take down Akron Blue. But now Akron Gold looking for a little bit of revenge here with a winner's final ticket on the line and then getting the confirmation, of course, these semifinals are still best of three. And of course, gold, or the gold roster still waiting on their start for their winner's final matchup. So, so far, so good. Good run for all the Saints rosters as of this moment. And Oxy is looking to stick a little thorn in the side of the St. Clair Saints green team right off the bat. Finds the pass from MDG right off the wall and just beelines this one directly towards the center. Off the face off right into center field. Jonathan immediately finding the shot. Gonna force Jazzy to make the save. Sai is up there, gonna hand this one off to Jazzy. From one side, looking towards the other, tries to juke pack Oxy, but could not quite find the way around. Fabso's there for a little bit of extra reinforcement both two members of Akron right at the center field mark to stop that from crossing. It's going to get interfered with immediately. Fabso over to Sai now in the Akron zone, looking for an additional touch. It's going to drop right into the middle of the crease, but there is no St. Clair member there to make a shot happen. So Sai now from their own zone, going to try and get this one passed. Centering pass over to Sai, could not quite get it past one of the defenders there from Akron. Jazzy's going to be stuck in the St. Clair zone now to try and fight this off versus two of Akron. Does find Fabso, try and clear this out, but Jonathan directly into the Saints zone, gets past one, nearly had a shot attempt. The ball does not go towards the net, just goes right through the crease instead. So Saints gonna breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief that time by as it gets cleared directly into the Akron zone and sent right back into the St. Clair zone pretty well immediately. Sai forced to burn half that tank of boost, try and just get back and be there to make the save. Fabso, Drop pass in the Akron zone is just going to go to an Akron player. MDG with control as of right now. Gets past one, gets past a second. Looking to get past Fabso as well. Will continue to control the ball, but not have the momentum to try and push this one forward. It took the Saints like five separate attempts to try and get that ball away from them. But they do manage to do so in the end. Oxy trying to put the pass backwards over into one of its teammates, going to be successful. Jonathan towards the center is going to be stopped there by Fabso, who pops this one up to Sai. Sai is going to drill this thing alongside. Centering attempt is not going to be available, though, for Fabso. Gets a piece of the hood on it, but not enough to control. Oxy shot off the side is going to go wide. Jazzy tries to leave it for Sai. Sai with control, but Jonathan is going to launch that thing directly off his hood. Pop fly into center field, or we do see MDG try to make a centering shot. It is going to go over the head, and that is going to be the second goal of the game as MDG passes this thing off to Oxy, and Oxy makes no mistake. Wasn't the fastest moving ball, but was enough to get past Sai and gets Akron the second goal of the game. About a minute 30 left on the clock. Saints need the move, and they need the move quickly if they want to get back into this one, but if the shot immediately going towards their net, Definitely a rough spot, as that's going to be Jonathan now finding another goal here for Akron Gold. Some fantastic interference there from one of the drivers on the side of Akron. I think that was either MDG or Oxy who was messing with the goaltender so that they could not jump in time. So that lead just extends further here for Akron Gold. 3-0 so far versus our St. Clair Saints green roster. And let's make that a fourth as MDG. Fantastic pass off the sky here. Or from the sky, rather. Just lets it drop right into the hood of Jonathan. Push is that thing right into the left-hand side. This game is probably as good as gold here for Akron. Barring something absolutely insane happening. But 
Babs was going to try and get something started here. Looked for the pinch off the wall, but could not quite find the angle and the speed that they were looking for. Will be a slow shot towards the net. All three Saints are up here at this point, looking for some offensive pressure. But with the ball just kind of being stuck up in the skies, there's not much they can really do. And as soon as that counterattack happens, we've seen this story before. Beautiful shot from MDG. Absolutely punished the Saints for that big offensive push. And the Saints knew they needed to move, but unfortunately caught themselves overextending. This first game is going to 99% likely go on over to Akron Gold. Looking for game number two, but see if they can get one on the board, get some momentum. See if they can maybe crack the armor a little bit. Some decent battles into the center field area. MDG it does bring it right back up to the skies, passing it off to their teammates. The passing positioning from Akron has just been super effective as of right now. Good little attempt there from Jazzy to try and put one on net. Was very, very close, but does end up hitting the post. But as you can hear, the time is ticking on down. Akron Gold are going to be successful at shutting out St. Clair Saints Green for this first game and putting themselves onto a match point because, of course, this is still best of three now that we have that confirmation. So Green going to have to go back to the drawing board. Only three shots in total there for the entirety of the Saints. Meanwhile, 12 on the side of Akron. Definitely the name of the game. It felt like the green roster was just kind of trapped in their own zone. Could not really get anything started. And if they did manage to clear, it was not for very long. And definitely let's see the squad there. A little bit of, uh, not frustration, but a little bit of, how should I describe it? Just confusion or... Uh, blank faced so to speak just like my mind right now is just completely blank and with how that game went it could definitely be a little bit disheartening but you have a couple of moments to just uh, bring it on back regroup at least they're not angry it looks like so regroup game number two on the way let's see what they can end up doing here and then around the rest of the brackets as well we are waiting for this next one now we do hear it ticking on down, but of course, again, exclamation mark brackets will bring up the brackets if you do want to follow things along while we are watching. All right, game number two. Let's see what you got, Saints, as we have an immediate uh, shot attempt here for the Saints. It is going to end up going wide. MDG is going to pick this one up for the time being. Drops this one down to Jonathan, who is going to clear this one out. Dump and chase over towards Fabso. Fabso is able to control for just a moment's time. Leaves it back for Sai, who gets kind of knocked aside a little bit, leaving MDG to do what they want with the ball for the time being. It is going to be some, uh, Jazzy actually in center field, going to mess with the offender there from the side of Akron. Pushing that ball over to the side. MDG immediately getting demoed off the field here from Fabso. Yeah, these players are starting to get a little bit feisty, as it would seem. There's going to be two demos within this first minute here. Jonathan tried to make the play there onto the St. Clair Saints green net, but is going to end up going off to the side. Jazzy now. Finding it over to side. Up into the skies, looking for an angle to bring this thing back towards the net. There was two Akron players there, ready and waiting. Perhaps a little bit of an odd contact is going to send this thing all the way across the field, across the center line. Jazzy's going to have control for just a moment's time. Going to be picked up by the side of Akron. Jonathan looks for the shot. Passes this one back to Oxy, actually. Oxy in the same zone. Looking for the shot, waits with it. It's just going to put it off towards the post, but you have MDG making their move as well as Jonathan, but catching them both off guard. And one of the defenders from Akron Gold actually did end up missing, but the Saints were not necessarily confident on that to make an offensive play. They're going to try now. Going to send this one on into the zone. Oxy makes the initial save. Jonathan is there as well. Jazzy a little bit slow to the ball. It's going to get beat out this time by as it gets cleared to center, but Sai is there. Looks to take it themselves off the crossbar. Is someone going to be there to hit? Not this time. 
Saints finally getting themselves a little bit of pressure here into this game. Centering pass over and over and over again. Jazzy did get knocked out of the position. Shot on target, though, is going to be stopped by Jonathan. Good shot from the Saints. Good save from Akron. Able to keep the pressure out of the net. Shot after shot after shot now here for the Saints. Definitely making it a little bit nerve-wracking for all of us at home as well as the Akron Zips, but not going to be able to find the back of the net. Nothing that can get themselves onto the scoreboard. That 50 just stopped dead in its tracks. It is now going to be Fabso towards center. Going to be stopped by Oxy. There is a Saints member there. Can Psy get it off the backboard? No, it is going to be scooped up by Jonathan. And then Psy gets immediately punted into the net. Just slowing them down from getting back into the play. Some solid player versus player action here from uh, from Akron. And actually, there we go. That might have been the chance that we were looking for. What looked harmless, Fabso is going to put the Saints ahead here after the shot. Just manages to squeak past them. And the other defender there, MDG, could not get there in time. So there we go. Again, doesn't have to be fancy. Just get it towards the net. Fabso able to capitalize. And now Saints are the ones in the driver's seat. Some good play here from Jazzy to stall that one out, not to go for the shot immediately. But now it's going to be Akron Zips. They are looking to play a little bit angrier, possibly, as it's going to be some demos off the start. Oxy now going to bring, bring this over into the center field where Jonathan is waiting. Centering attempt is going to go on over to Jazzy. Shot on target this time by is going to go towards the post, MDG. Solid opportunity, but not quite going to be able to finish that one. Saints the other way, however, is going to make this the Zips push that one away from the post. Pop fly into the right-hand corner or in the left corner, depending on which way you're looking at it. Another shot actually hitting their own defender. But the ball was not going towards the net. Demos all over the place. These players are getting aggressive. Jazzy floating above the crossbar as per usual. Another opportunity there from Sai looks to get it. Fabso looks to get another piece of it but it is going through the crease over and over and over again, but not quite the net. One more time here for... One more time here for the Akron Zips. Now trying to get themselves on the board and actually Fabzo again is going to be able to get this one. That's going to be Sai setting that one up from the skies right off the backboard and Fabso was there just to basically be a wall for the ball to bounce off of and your St. Clair Saints green roster are starting to get a little bit more comfortable versus this Akron squad. <laughs> nice little play there from Sai, really taking his time along the wall. Of course at this point you don't have to force anything. No crazy offense. You know that Akron is probably seeing red here and want to get some goals extremely quickly. 20 seconds left to go. Jonathan down into the crease. Did find one of their teammates, but could not bring that one towards the net. Fabso stalled that thing out in the air for so long. We're now within the last couple of seconds, and it's looking like our St. Clair Saints green roster are going to put the, <laughs> the nail in the cop coffin here as it's going to be a 3-0 victory here it looks like for St. Screen to bring this to a game number three. And at the same time going to give you the update as we now have Concord University oh dear god versus St. Clair Saints. I, I scoff because I know that uh, anybody who watched last week knows that Concord are absolutely insane. So this is going to be a tough one. And the fact that they already have the one goal on the board right now definitely says a lot with how crazy this team is. And of course, with the way that the CRL um, qualifiers are, it's all points based over the last couple of tournaments, over the last, or excuse me, of the four tournaments in this, uh, in this event. So just because you won one doesn't mean that you don't play in the others. From what I understand, like your points across all four will definitely be calculated as we are going to see Crispy just start to really put the hurt here onto the St. Clair Saints goals roster. Knew this was going to be a tough one and they are finding some openings already within the first minute 30 to put themselves up ahead by two.
Bradley, of course, will catch up with St. Clair Saints Green shortly as that one is going into game three um, in a couple of moments' time. But in the meantime here, we do, of course, for that Concord squad, Crispy, Helix, and Seamus. And as this one goes on towards the net, we're going to hot swap on over here as Akron Gold seem to have found themselves a quick start, but also have we. So within 20 seconds, we have two goals on the board. All right, we have ourselves a series here. As Sai carries that thing basically all the way across the field, gets in front of it to be a body block and lobs it up for Jazzy. Beautiful start here for this game. Of course, with that gold game being a best of five, we'll definitely catch up with them in a couple of minutes. But right now, the winner's life is on the line for both of these teams here between St. Clair St. Screen and Akron Gold. If you specifically want to watch one of the teams over the other, exclamation mark gold or exclamation mark green will give the, you access to the dedicated streams for each of those teams. First minute basically down here. We have Fabso in the Saints zone, really trying to clear this thing out. Sai is going to be able to pick it up for the time being. Used all the boost to really do so. Try to get the centering pass off. Not quite going to get past the defenders of Akron. Awkward bounce now into the corner. Fabso really making a mess of things out there. Akron scrambling to clear this thing out, but it is finally sent out into the Saints zone. Passed it off to Sai. Sai looking to try and get past the defender. Is going to get pushed into the corner, however. Dodges the one defender, but it's going to get picked up by the other, MDG. Going to try and push this one forward. Jazzy is going to be able to stop it, pick it up again, almost gets it. It's going to be Fabso up in the sky as the cow roller. These players predicting these things this way. And how in the world is Jazzy always there by the crossbar? Fantastic job there for Fabso and Jazzy. A huge pass and is able to get just enough on it to push it past before the defender got there. Might have been a secure, but in a game like this, I'd rather it be secured than a freak accident of sorts. 2-1 now here for your St. Clair Saints green roster, but it is immediately almost going to be answered. What a shot there from Jonathan, kept it low, but Sai basically got a spoiler on it and was able to not get a side. Jonathan flying through the center, able to just stall it out for just a moment's time, but they're the ones that have to move Fabso with control of it for just a moment's time, looking for Jazzy. Jazzy's gonna pick it up one-on-one, -on -one, or actually ended up being a two-on-one, my mistake, but could not get the pass Jonathan. Fabso up to the skies, could not get past Jonathan, but is able to get it away from them, forcing the defenders of Akron to retreat back to the crossbar. Shot attempt would have been there. Jazzy was looking for it, I think, but could not quite find it. Now, Akron on the attack once again, but it is sent on over to Sai, who's able to control and let this thing just lob slowly into the Akron corner. Wide open net, actually, but a big save. Jazzy had the shot, rebound on target. It's still not in there. Fabso with the third one could not get past the Akron defenders. Let's make it a fourth, why don't we? No, Jonathan's going to say screw that as well. Keeping this one out of the net. Shot after shot there for the Saints, trying to find some sort of insurance. And they are being denied over and over and over again. Sai centering pass on over to Fabso, and there it is. It might have taken that many shots, but the Saints find their insurance after a fantastic angle on that pass from Sai, and the one-on-one -on -one is going to be Fabso's to win. Two minutes left on the clock, and that is still plenty of time for Akron to make their way back into this one, as we are seeing an offensive opportunity from them immediately, and that is going to be two huge blocks there for Sai immediately. One more opportunity now on the breakout. Only 16 boosts left to play with, but it's definitely enough to make a, a redirect. Fabso centering pass, but nobody home this time here for the Saints. Big demo onto Jonathan's gonna slow things down for a second. MDG is all the way back into the Saints zone. Shot on target from Oxy is gonna be denied by Fabso. Okay, we definitely have ourselves quite a bit. I think we're gonna have to hot swap here as the Saints gold roster are actually
on a tear to try and bring it back from a 4-0 deficit versus Concord. Are you kidding me? This is definitely an interesting opportunity here, and we wanted to make sure it was seen. And just as we switch on over, I know every time we switch, a goal is scored, but unfortunately, it is not in our favor this time by here. Concord is gonna put this up five, but with 25 seconds left to go. Might be a little bit tough here for the Gold Squad, but also a little bit tough is a 4-0 and o deficit. So let's see if they can bring themselves back up here. Two quick ones could definitely do the trick. Barris alongside Vesh trying to make the play happen, but it got knocked out right to the side immediately. And CMS is going to be the, the dagger in the, in the heart of sorts here for the Saints Gold roster to stop that comeback from happening. Clock's gonna tick on down here and that will do the trick. Concord will take that one. Let's quickly hop on over to green to see what's been going down. And sure enough, we came down again. I don't know what it is about switches into goals, but unfortunately they have not been in our favor here. St. Clair Saints green. They're hit by one, but 10 seconds is enough to do some damage. Let's see if they can hold off for another couple seconds here. And with a demo on the side pretty well immediately, that does make things a little bit scary. But that bounce, though, has been absolutely huge here for the Saints. And that is going to be the dagger in the heart. Cups up once again here for our hat trick for Jazzy as he <laughs> finishes the job here versus Akron. Maybe that's the trick. We just need to keep switching uh, streams over and over and over again. And we're just going to have games that are like 12 to 13 or something like that at this rate here. But with that being said, St. Clair Saints Green are going to take it two to one over Akron Gold, securing their trip to winner's finals. As we now take a trip into winner's finals for the St. Clair Saints Gold roster are continuing to have a hard time here versus this Concord University squad, which are of course absolute killers in their own right. Fantastic pass right into the corner for Crispy to really pick up on. Best of five action now for both of the matches coming up here. Winners finals will, that we're seeing right now will be best of five. When we see green again, it will also be best of five action. So back to those slightly longer series that are a little bit more traditional if you're following other leagues like Nace and such. But honestly, good on St. Clair Saints Gold. When we were watching them originally in game number one, it looked like Concord basically had their number off the bat. But to have come back three goals and keep uh, Concord honest, and to keep them honest just like this, here is Barris is going to find the pass immediately there from Christian, right in the sweet spot, right in the crease. No mistake. Puts that one on through. Gold going this even with Concord is definitely good to see. Would be a huge upset if they were able to take care of them. But I do not want to jinx it, so we'll have to see. I was going to see Vesh here. Going to be tucked this one in, but unfortunately there was a bunch of players there from Concord right there to make the stop pretty well immediately. Bear's going to have to try and run back. Vesh is the only defender as of right now, but a good one actually. Turns into a pass here for Christian. Barris is all the way downfield. Looks for the shot, but it is going to be stopped by Seamass, who was able to stop the redirect. And now Helix the other way. Christian off the field there for a brief moment of time. Almost got taken out again there by Seamass. Oh my gosh, CMS is just absolutely smoking people over and over again. Shot on target, but a huge save there from Helix. Did not get all of it, but got enough of it. And you know what? We'll take those if you're on the defending side. Crispy now, the other way, stopped by Christian up in midfield. No boost to work with those. Could not quite stop that ball from going away. CMS now looking for a teammate shot. Goes a little bit wide of the Saints net. Vesh is going to pick it up into the skies. Crispy's going to meet him up there, though. Keeps this at the center field line, back into the Saints zone. What a mess in the Saints goal. And again, it was just on target, but so much interference in the crease was enough to get the job done. Incredible job there from Crispy to mess with the Saints defenders. Bring Concord back up one once again. Christian looking for a nice quick shot, but could not beat the defender of Concord. 
Concord going to bring it in. This shot is on target off the post, but it is not going to quite go in. Dangerous angle did end up going over towards Helix as well. See Mass gets past one, looking to get past two, but Vesh is going to meet him up by the crossbar. Stop that from going any further, but it's still stuck in the same zone. Barris now looking to get past CMS and is going to be successful in doing so. Big fast shot on target, just barely going to end up going wide after the redirection from Crispy, who is going to take this up to CMS, who is not going to be able to get the shot because Christian was there to stop that from happening. Christian with control drops it off to Barris. Be now Vesh from center field trying to make the play on forward. Barris now up into the skies once again trying to slow it down. Doesn't have the boost really to work with right now. Christian stops the ball from being cleared through center. Vesh here off the wall to try and get a shot on target. It was slow but it was there but could not quite get past the defenders. Right now Concord's actually having a heck of a hard time trying to get it out of their own zone. Crispy now going to try and get it out, but once again, now it's going to be Vesh. Stops it from making it past the halfway point. Going to finally clear it for just a second, but now it's going to be Christian who dumps it right into the Concord University zone. Crispy and the rest of Concord going to just dump it immediately, but they don't necessarily have the pressure. The Saints were able to kind of control it a little bit if they really wanted to, but it's some good interference and some interceptions coming up from Concord being able to push this one right back towards the net. One shot is going to be missed. One shot is going to be missed again. But how about the third? Helix makes no mistake. And that's going to bring Concord up three to one. May have hit the backboard twice, but it ends up being the perfect setup here for Helix to knock it down in the end. So with just over a minute left to go, St. Clair Saints Gold looking to try and not go down two games early here in this best of five series. And then the awkward spot that would be if they do end up dropping winners finals. Like sure, you drop on down to the losers finals. As we now see another shot on target. Vesh really gonna have to be careful with that one. Cause that was extremely, extremely deadly. <laughs> Crossbar shot once again with 40 seconds left to go. But you drop down into the lower bracket from winners finals. You're waiting in losers finals, and I think, if I recall correctly, the matches are still at, like losers round four, which means you're waiting like an hour and a half, if not two hours, for your next match. And we've seen what happened to Green last week, where they had dropped down from the winter final. They played a team that they had already beaten, beaten rather convincingly at that, but then lost because they just were too cold. They could try and scrim all they want, but they were able to get beaten out that time by. So it's definitely a possible reality here for the Saints Gold roster to have to go through as well as they are going to go down 2-0 in this series. Try and spin this one around in this best of five. You can see a little bit more life here from this St. Clair Saints Gold roster though because shots wise, much better compared to last time. Five, three and three, so yeah, you got the... Uh, the 11 shots there from the side of Saints. They were able to outshoot the side of uh, Concord that time, but unfortunately Concord was just able to capitalize on the opportunities that were presented to them. Well, let's see Concord possibly one more time here, or can we get a little bit of a reverse sweep going? Wouldn't that be a storyline? We will see soon enough here as Vesh is actually going to take this right off the face off, beelining that thing towards the net, but immediately stopped in his tracks. It's going to be Crispy from Concord over down the CMS looking for Helix, but could not quite find him. Helix is going to try and run all the way back. So what was the only defender back? Just straight up brute forcing it, and actually Vesh is going to be the first one to get a goal here for St. Clair Saints Gold in this one as that is going to be a fantastic brute force through everybody and capitalizing on the slightest of errors. Off the faceoff, pop fly through center field, right on over to Crispy. And actually a little bit of a miscommunication here from the Concord squad as both of them actually avoided it, thinking the other one was going to end up taking it. Does still keep it in the same zone, however. That is going to be Helix off to Crispy. 
Crispy off the backboard on target to Seamass, who makes no mistake, puts it up into the goal for that top left shot. So sure, they might have let one go, but they answered back pretty well immediately. Big play there for Concord to stop this from bleeding out, so to speak. All that action, and it's not even been a minute yet here. We have Crispy taking it himself, actually, all the way towards the net, nearly getting the job done that time by. Into the Concord zone, kind of a pop fly here throughout the crease, and nobody was really confident with going for it until Helix gets a ball, or gets a touch on the ball. It's gonna be now Bash right back. Gets the boost before Crispy does, so Crispy's not gonna necessarily be in play for a, the first little bit here. St. Clair have an opportunity. They found an opening, and Barris is gonna be able to get there. An unusual mistake here from Concord after the demo goes on through, and Barris has all the time in the world. Well, maybe not all the time. I'll give credit. That defender was on hot pursuit right there. Slow down a little bit, you were probably getting punted. But uh, got on the Saints to be able to capitalize on that one, and they take themselves the lead. Off the faceoff, we're right back into the St. Clair zone. We were have CMS trying to cause an absolute nuisance here with Vesh. Just look at him pushing him over, being an absolute nuisance here in this one. And then he turns around and comes around and scores. Oh my goodness. Simas is an absolute enforcer here on the side of Concord University. I can stand behind the desk here and absolutely respect it, but I would definitely understand if uh, if CMS was getting under the skin of some of these Saints players here with the way that they're playing, and I absolutely love them for it. Right back into the St. Clair zone, CMAS right back doing what he does best through the skies and a little bit of interference. And actually, Crispy's gonna get a little bit uh, Feisty as well, right outside the crease. An awkward spot here. Seamass has all the time in the world to just drive right on by the Saints defender this time by. Saints making the mistake and letting him get another one. Concord being the first team in this group to qualify is right around the corner unless the Saints gold roster can find an answer quickly here. We have still, or I say quickly, but we have like half the game. How has it only been two minutes? As we see another shot on target, oh my goodness, Barris, that was actually a huge demo, but a huge save there from Crispy to actually stop that thing in its tracks. Christian from the corner, no boost in the tank, still does enough to keep this within the Concord zone. Besh could not get up in time, however, one player back, it is going to be Barris up into the skies. Gonna bring it into the corner. One more player is going to knock it right back into the Saints zone here. Crispy down on over. I believe that was Helix, but Christian is going to pick it up for the time being. Shots on target, but it is going to be stopped by Crispy, but it's going to bounce. And unfortunately there for the Saints, that shot was not on target. They could not quite get there for the right angle in time. The ball is going to go back the other way here by Seamass, but it looks like Concord is actually going to take the moment to regroup and play a little bit more defensively compared to just throwing the ball towards the net. Just kill off more time, because honestly, fair enough, they can play that game right now. They don't have to score anymore. A rough clearing attempt here from Besh is actually gonna put the ball right onto the hood of the Concord players, but it is gonna finally go the other way. Besh trying to predict where this ball is gonna go. Messes with CMS at least a little bit, but he's still able to carry this one off into the St. Clair zone, all the way towards the post. Centering pass, can CMS get onto this, but no, Besh is gonna get there to redirect that shot immediately. Saints need one, and they need to find it within a minute here. Last or possibly last minute of play in this series if the Saints cannot answer.
how in the world did that happen? It didn't look like it was threatening at all. And then Vesh is there. Barris off to Vesh. Manages to get above the player. And oh my goodness. What looked like a routine clear ends up being Vesh's chance for victory. Absolutely phenomenal stuff coming out of Vesh able to punish that one. But now we have ourselves a tie game with overtime on the horizon. There is still tons of pressure here for Concord towards the Saints net. But if the Saints can counterattack like they just did, they might be able to find a hole in the armor to bring this to a game number four. But Crispy again gets one touch off, second touch, and right off to another player, but it misses. They miss two. Can Barris find the breakout to maybe bring this to a game four? He does find it. Cups off everybody. Vash with the hat trick to possibly bring Saints to a game number four. Oh, but this isn't over. This isn't over in the slightest. There is still 20 seconds left to go here. Off the face-off, we're going into the Concord University zone. Vesh with control for the time being. Christian is there for the interference right at center field. Clock ticking down. Vesh, do you have another in the tank by chance? Maybe save it for the next game if we actually end up going there. And sure enough, that may end up being the case. One more opportunity. Can Concord capitalize? It's actually not done yet. It will fall. St. Clair Saints gold get themselves a game within the last minute of play. That is what we like to see. As we load on up, wondering what St. Clair Saints Green's doing. Well, here you go. We have OC Esports versus St. Clair Saints Green. Of course, do not fret. We will hop on over back to gold in a couple of moments. But OC Esports haven't quite the run for themselves as well, and definitely not the team that I would be expecting to see here in this winner's finals, given the way that the bracket is looking. But absolutely incredible job from their own right that is going to be chili north and g-man we are going to be switching back over to gold in just a moment's time so do not worry about that but one thing i also do want to mention if you want to be specifically in on one team's run throughout this tournament exclamation mark gold or exclamation mark green will give you the stream link to that specific team's stream but we are going to hop on back on over here. St. Clair Saints Gold, after cheating what looks like death in this series, are able to bring themselves back in this one here. And then Crispy, Helix, and CMS. I know they are a little bit frustrated. I feel like they probably just saw that one get away from them. Center field, we have Vesh and CMS kind of duking it out here. Barris actually finds one. He's wide open over there. Christian is going to open up the scoring here, and it's going to be for St. Clair Saints gold. Of course, I made the joke the one time, but hell, there is no offsides in Rocket League. So if you find a pass like that, he damn well better capitalize. And Christian made no mistake, and that is going to be Saints up one early here in game number four. Although, right back the other way, Helix was looking to put an answer in for themselves. And honestly, that's what they've been doing all series long. Sure, they may give up a goal early, but they pretty well immediately answer within the next 30 seconds. I feel like this has probably been the longest that it's been without an answering goal of sorts. And just like that, commentary curse once again. CMS is going to make me eat my words. Just going to be able to put this one right above Varys and right below Christian, unfortunately, there for the Saints fans. Tie in this game. One to one. With a little over three minutes still to go. Concord looking to take their trip into day two by securing one more win here versus the Saints. Saints looking, of course, to try and get themselves the reverse sweep. Keep the dream alive with a game five. 
See Mass again, though, has been an absolute thorn in the side of the Saints. Looking for shot after shot, as well a bunch of interference as well. And sure enough, from right outside the crease, Concord University making no mistake in the slightest. Helix with a fantastic pass over to CMAS, who is just on that right side of the crease. Tucks it on in, and now Concord, they have the match in their hands. Off the face off, we're going to go into the Concord zone for just a moment's time. Barris and Vesh had an opportunity to make the play. Vesh took the shot. Barris is here for the rebound. No boost in the tank to continue, though. Going to get picked up by Helix, who's going to bring this one downfield back into the same zone where Barris is there up into the skies to try and answer, but Crispy is there to stop it from going any further. Tries to get towards the net, but Vesh is going to be there to stop that thing immediately. CMS looking for the hat trick in the series if they can manage to find one more on the board. Be absolutely huge in their own right, but they end up passing it over to Crispy, who's looking to do some fancy flippy work, but not quite going to get past the Saints defense this time by but they're going to be able to stop it from going into the Concord zone, which allows for a shot on the target there from Helix, but Besh with the epic save to get the job done. Big shot on target as well. Christian, that was an absolute bullet. Holy smokes, from center field. Besh pushes this one on forward, and how did he get so much speed on this thing? Beautifully done. 123. And that wasn't even a pinch. We have ourselves a two and two game. Biting nails, appropriate action to say the least when watching these match up. Concord now looking to try and pull ahead if they can continue the pressure on the Saints net, but actually Saints managed to find some control. Vesh off the backboard, looking for a teammate, and misses Crispy, but it also misses the Saints player. They don't get all of it. Shot on target again, but Helix is the thorn in the side of the Saints once again. Denying that offensive opportunity. Besh still has some control of it, though. Just not much boost to really play with for anything further. Awkward bounce into the corner. is going to go all the way down into the St. Clair Saints zone. Looks to try and clear it. Christian's going to dump it on over. Barris was there, but does not really have much in the tank to follow up with some sort of play. So going to have to retreat for the time being. Crispy brings it right on down to CMS. CMS up on the wall. Trying to be as annoying as possible. That shot from Helix actually just came out of nowhere. But Barris was able to make the save. With a minute left to go, overtime is definitely a possibility. But every single opportunity, either of these teams bring across that center field line, it is terrifying, to say the least. Besh, pop fly pass over to Christian. Christian brings it on down, looks for the backboard. Nobody from the Saints are in the sky, but this is going all the way downfield. Can anybody get there? They barely are going to be able to bring that one to the post and keep that out of the net. Absolutely terrifying shot there from the side of Concord, who of course are looking to buy their tickets into day two. If they can win this game here versus the Saints. Saints trying to stay alive in this winner's bracket. Vesh is going to be able to kip, pick it up from their own zone. Gets interfered with though by Crispy, who is still there, but no boost in the tank. Helix looks for the shot, ends up hitting a player instead. CMAS, don't you dare, my friend. Oh my goodness. Tries to find an opportunity through. It's going to be Christian now the other way. Passes it off to Vesh. It's on the ground. They get it at the one second mark. Are you kidding me? Vesh and the rest of the Saints coming in clutch for a game five moment. Unless something absolutely bonkers happens. Oh my goodness, that's what we like to see. The reverse sweep is a possibility. St. Clair Saints gold making it happen here. Taking a peek at St. Clair Saints green versus OC. It's looking like the St. Clair Saints green roster have them exactly where they want. One game up. Granted, yes, this game is 0-0. And everybody, here's a quick broadcast tip. For that exact moment, for those exact things, this is why you go into your audio filters and add a limiter. Otherwise, uh, F for all headphones users. <laughs> or I am so sorry for your speakers. <coughs> oh, you love to see it, though. Absolute cinema. We're 
def we're definitely going to have to keep it tabs of how Green is doing as well. Granted, they look a little comfortable as of right now. And don't worry, that's not you. I am spazzing out apparently right now too. There we go. Gold about to get started here with the decisive game number five. Green, of course, still in action, but they are up one game sitting pretty versus OC Esports. We'll follow this along now, because I am not gonna lie. If this if this if the Saints Gold roster managed to pull this off, oh my goodness! What happened? Barris had this Huh? Oh my gosh, he barely even had to touch it. I hit more of the defender than it did him. Okay, anybody who comes from FGC knows that uh, we just take those and we move on to the next play. But right back the other way though, this is where Concord University use oh my God. Concord University usually see red and come back with a goal for themselves. And it's usually this guy. CMS is right there to try and make the answer, but they leave the door open again! Vash gets it after a fantastic pass from Barris once again. The overextended offense, it's getting punished. St. Clair Saints Gold would be an absolute upset if they managed to pull this off. But everybody, we still have plenty of time in this game to go as we are going to see some more offense coming up. And we knew they're seeing red. They want back in this game. They would be angry if this is how their game goes. So they are going to answer immediately. Crispy alongside Helix. Going to seal the deal here to get Concord University on the board quickly in response. Bears had an awkward time trying to control that one, and it is actually going to allow Concord to get some control in the Saints zone. Vesh from downtown again tried to play that counterattack game, but Crispy was ready for it this time. Did not get over aggressive with the offense. Helix off the board though does stop this play from really getting any merit. And right on the on the counterattack now here for the Saints. It's gonna be Christian, pop flies, but actually it's gonna be intercepted by one of the members of Concord who bring it into the corner. Crispy is waiting for it, waiting for it. Christian and Barris are both gonna to have to go up there. Otherwise, that would have been a teed up ball for Concord or just the smoke right in the middle. Helix had an opportunity too. One of the Saints were demoed, but immediately sent aside, challenged and taken away from crossing attempt. Going to be stopped by Barris CMS again. Just looking to be the thorn in the side of the Saints. Feed us enough copium and then take it all the way in the last possible second. Christian from one side. Vesh blocks, but is going to be blocked again by Helix. A fantastic shot. This counterattack stuff they are kind of looking for now. But I feel like their offense from the side of Concord has actually been maybe hindered a little bit because they can't go as hard as they used to. Big shot from Barris, a bit bigger save there from Crispy to keep this within one. Two minutes, 50 seconds. Christian smoked off the board, but does that leave the door open for Barris? He gets past one, but he's not going to be able to get past two, and it's going to leave Helix to try and drag race Vesh here. Pass on over to CMS off wide. Barris up to Christian. Christian doesn't get a lot of it, but it's going to go to Vesh. Vesh over to Crispy, actually. Crispy passes it over, redirection. It just goes high. Just kind of floating around the Saints zone and center field. The Saints are playing solid defense, but they've not really been able to get some sort of offense cooking for themselves in this last couple minutes, which granted, of course, they don't necessarily have to. But anytime you see a team on the back foot this much, it does make you nervous, but that could be the opportunity. Crispy's demoed off the board. They interfere towards goaltender, but no. Big stop there from Helix to make sure the 1v1 was not going to end up being the play. In the Concord zone, we have Barris up in the corner. It's gonna drop on down right in the sweet spot. It's floating, but it's not gonna go. Pop fly into the crease again, but Crispy's there this time. 
That's going all the way downfield where Christian is going to be able to control it up to the sky as he goes off the roof, looking for one, passes it past to the one player. It's going to be centered, but crispy again. Save after save here from both sides. Now the demo though, oh boy, shot on target. Vesh could not get it, crispy. It's going to tie this one up at two. Demo coming out there from Concord, absolutely clutch. Almost an even better save there from Vesh, but could not get all of it. Just a mere hood pad of sorts. A loose ball towards the crease. Oh no, that would have been a not like this kind of moment, but everybody, we have a minute to go in this one. Overtime is in the horizon, unless one of these teams can find an answer. Big passing play, big save from Christian. Vesh is gonna sack himself to get Seamus out of here for at least just a moment. Concord had an opportunity. Christian gets bumped, but it is gonna clear the ball into the Concord zone, leaving St. Clair at least a little bit of breathing room for the time. CMS, don't you do it, mate. Oh boy, extremely close, just barely wide. Has a second chance at it, has a little boost at it as well. And Helix is gonna be able to secure the goal here for Concord University, putting them up one with just over 30 seconds left to go in this one. Of course, this is to move on. Winner side day two. Secure it now, you're good for the day. Otherwise, gonna have to get stuck on the lower side and wait for an hour or two, try again. CMS again, absolute bomb from one side of the arena to the other. 15 seconds left to go. Saints, Bring it into the offensive zone. They're in the right place. Just can they make something happen? Five seconds left to go. The clock is ticking. It just has to hit the ground and Crispy is not gonna make any mistake of it. The dagger in the heart of the Saints fan base is that one barely slips through their fingertips. That, of course, is not the end for St. Clair Saints Gold. They will have to wait until the lower final to see if they get to qualify in one more time. Possibly versus a team they've already played before. Maybe somebody brand new. We'll have to see. Hopping over to St. Clair Saints Green, though, versus OC. OC has managed to get themselves a point on the board here in game number three. However, it looks like St. Clair Saints Green have been doing a pretty dang good job at controlling this one. Two wins so far in this series, keeping OC with nothing. Jazzy looking for the finishing blow there on that one. Could not quite get it. G-Man here from OC looking to try and push this one over. Right around the crease. Good little redirection here, though, from Saints Green, able to bring this into the OC zone. Sai's not going to be able to get a handle on it, though. It's going to be OC trying to get some offense in. Jazzy has control for the time being. Gets past one defender, looks to try and get past a second defender. Can they do this? Can they tie this one up? They have a lot of time to make this happen. Jazzy into the center, nearly getting a piece of it. Could not get the job done, though, this time by. Fabso looking to get some control of it. A little bit of a pop fly on over to Sai. Sai right on target. And then we have ourselves on 1-1 game with over half this game to go. Fantastic job there from the Saints to uh, tie this one up, but we're not, done. we're not done just yet. Man around alongside the rest of OC Esports did win the faceoff and go on forward, but actually it's going to be Sai and the rest of the Saints to get some offense in on the OC net. One shot on target is going to be saved by G Man. Chili is here as well to try and push this thing away, but it is going to be Fabso centering pass. It goes through two of the defenders, but they do manage to just throw this into the next corner. North on the side of OC. Had control for a second, but there is one member, I believe that's Sai, over the Jazzy. Jazzy shot on target, and wow, from the crossbar down. 
able to secure that one right before the halfway point of this game. Sneaks it on in, St. Clair Saints Green in position to find themselves on winner's side of day two of this tournament. A little bit of a redemption arc of sorts if uh, they can keep this up considering how last week went. Definitely still too early to start counting our chickens though because we are just crossing halfway here in game number three. OC Esports still have a lot in the tank and a lot of time to get something done with it. Big Juke actually coming out here from G-Man and my goodness, it felt like that play took an eternity, but it was super effective. Just straight up brute forces it on through. 2-2 two -two game. Just about two minutes and 20 seconds to go. Tell you what, OC Esports was not the team that I was expecting to see here in this winner's finals, but they are putting on a show here with our Saints. Loving what I'm seeing here. Lots of sigh love here in the chat. We see you. Uh, thank you for tuning in and supporting your squad. In the OC zone, we're going off to G-Man. G-Man is going to be interfered with by Sai. Sai pops on down to Jazzy, who's able to dump it into the corner. Little bit of a poor check onto the goaltender as well. Making, <laughs> making North double check and not strictly just looking at the ball when you got another player just being an absolute bullet towards you. Centering pass is not going to quite make it there. Jazzy looking to try and pass it back, but no, it is actually going to be taken here by OC, who brings it into the Saints zone. Fabso is demoed off the board. Two on three here for the favor of OC, if they can get something started. Going to end up being cleared downfield. It's going to be Jazzy. Passes on back here. Fabso has it. Minute left to go into this one. G-Man off to North. North just bombs this one all the way down. But with such force that it's actually going to come right back into the OC zone. Sai with control of it in the OC zone. Looking for one. He's going to try and dance through it. He's going to brute force right through OC in this instance here. And if they can hang on to it, that might have sealed their ticket for tomorrow. Thirty-eight seconds left to go here for St. Clair Saints Green to move on winner's side to Championship Sunday. G-Man though and the rest of OC looking to shut that down, bring this in. But Sai going the other way again. The hat trick is going to get it. Four to two here, St. Clair Saints Green. Well on their way here to getting the job done. I mean, 22 seconds left to go. I'm not cursing nothing. My mouth is shut. Off the backboard here. Saints can maybe look for one more, but it is going to be interfered with. G-Man, 10 seconds left to go, but immediately gets stolen from him. St. Clair Saints Green. After an absolute heartbreaker last week from losing in the final, are not wasting any time here in the second qualifier. St. Clair Saints Green, moving on the day two of the CRL Fall Open Qualifier. And as you can see immediately, just, you don't see esports players react too often. A lot of these times these players tend to be <laughs> quite robotic to say the least, but just cause they're that in the zone. So when you see them happy and you see them popping off, you know it means something. And to be able to go through this tournament all the way on winner's side after having the heartbreaker from last week, that's a damn good day. But the job is not done yet, everybody. We still have the, the finale basically here where it will be our St. Clair Saints gold roster going up against whoever 
ends up making it through the lower bracket. The part that sucks about this is we have quite a long time to wait before that, if I do recall correctly. It may be an opportunity here to pull up Gold's bracket, and maybe we could see some of the potential people that we can have um, up ahead of us in maybe a few moments or a few moments here. I'm not going to necessarily, or actually, hey, here we go. We just popped in here. So this was, of course, the St. Clair Saints green run. OC going through Boise State and everything too, eh? Damn. Okay. So we are taking a look. St. Clair Saints gold. Okay, we're actually not as uh, no, we're actually pretty far away, aren't we? But take a look at some of these teams here. Drexel, Akron, Kennesaw, Arizona State. If you sleep on any of these teams, you're an idiot. And one of those teams will have to be our final opponent for one more best of five to make it lower side day two. And I tell you what, it would be absolutely incredible to see two Saints make it in on day two. But as you saw the, with the bracket, we do have quite a bit of a wait ahead of us. In terms of content, I, I am definitely sad. In terms of saving my voice for a few hours or an hour or so, I can't complain. So if anybody needs a lunch break or anything along those lines, maybe have an early dinner or something. What time are we at here? Okay, yeah, it's about 4.20. So blaze up a quick dinner of some sort. And by the time you're finished, we should be back on field with the St. Clair Saints Gold fighting for their life in this tournament.